T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique host created top 10 lists, recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle, Adam Poston, Jay Alvarez, and me, Andrea Joy. Oh, yeah! <laughs> What, you've already, you're already over it? I'm over it. <laughs> you're already over, I'm right. over it. I loved it. Oh, thank you. You're biased. It was adorable. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> Even Ollie's upset. Listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. Uh, I am Adam. I'm one of your regular hosts. However, this week, we don't have Skype up. Nope, but I'm nope. not a I'm not your host, Tack. Oh, it must be me. Oh, it's not me. No. It's I'm Tack, Tack, and I'm not your host. Tonight, I'm just a participant. Sitting back over on the lady chase with a good hip now. It's not all the way good yet. Oh, Mostly good, good though. Right. I can walk, so that's good. Most Hi, Im- I'm Andrea Joy. Most importantly, can you wobble? I No. Okay. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm too old. Are you our host tonight? Yes, I'm doing the top 10 reasons I think flat earthers are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And no, our I'm other- not your host tonight. Okay. And our other host? Uh, I'm Jay Alvarez. Uh, I don't have a list, so I... Really hope I'm not the host. There's some strange other bearded dude in the studio with us tonight. Oh, that's though. a baby beard. Everyone has one. beards. Even you, babe. <laughs> Adam, is she <laughs> starting to call you her beard now? Yeah. That- <laughs> yes. I always had this dream. I wanted to just start like a, a social group of men, and uh, we're all bearded, and we're just called the beards. And what we would do is go around teaching lesser men how to chop wood and change a tire, <laughs> and then a- attend family functions with closeted lesbians. But do we do it while like... Uh, snapping our fingers. We're no, 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 that's the Puerto Rican Fight Club. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's West Side Or Greece. <clears throat> that's why Puerto Rican boxers have a hard time. It's hard to snap your fingers through those gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was your first dad joke of the night. <laughs> yep. I, I'm dead. These are my jokes. <laughs> I think every dad joke should also get a bell, but prep for that attack. We get should have. Well, maybe me and Jay will share the bell today all right, all right. I'll Does, let you Jay, do you want the bell tonight <laughs> <laughs> do you want to use the oh bell? don't give me that power yes. okay yes i will take that bell you all know right. we have we have a guy sitting right a random dude sitting all over you guys we keep have. rambling i was just gonna let you go until uh cool. the so silence who are you and, and who's your daddy and, and what does if, he do uh, for the record i did not let him in this time Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Baby Beard Johnson. I'm from. The... <laughs> yes. No, I'm I smell bacon. bacon. Anybody else smell bacon? I love oh. bacon. Bacon smells good. Bacon. Uh, it's bacon. Like the worst anything connotation is... of my nickname. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to do seven minutes in heaven with bacon. Oh, it's a good night for you to be oh, over here. Oh. Good episode for you to be. My on. reputation has preceded me. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I ain't even gonna need the whole seven. <laughs> One of, I'll, I'll finish it in thirty seconds. <laughs> One of Jacob's pickup lines, though, is, "Do you want to come back and eat bacon on my boat?" Yeah. God damn it! Yes, everyone <laughs> I mean, would. You can say would anything say no. back on my boat, and it's like a ninety percent chance yep. of working out. Yeah, that's time. true. No, but you could say anything about eating bacon, and it's about the same thing. So when they come together, it's just a magical moment. Yes, it's like uh, yes. universe c- colliding. Yeah, try it. <laughs> <laughs> can we do an official like announcement? Yeah. So this is? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Joining us from the Burn It Down Studios is Jacob. <laughs> do you want to use your last name too, or do you not want to? I mean, I don't really care. Jacob right. Bacon. Jacob Bennett, uh, <laughs> also known as Bacon from the Burn It Down Studios. He's their right. uh, fourth member, sort of fifth, sort of... Uh, intern slash intern. stuntman slash co-host. One of them's feeling stuntman. lazy. Um, as long as they don't put fifth beetle on the business card, you're going to be fine. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Does that just make you their slave? Whoa. Um, essentially. That's why I try to put all the names like before it says by the time you're done thinking of all the names I've listed off, you forget the fact that I'm just an indentured <laughs> servant for the podcast. No, that's why he's here. We're actually <laughs> supposed to have the burn it down crew tonight. They just sent him in their stead. <laughs> uh, well, well, they, how much they know they when to send you? the looks. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, you're, so gonna, you're gonna do well here. The Burn It Down <laughs> podcast, for those who haven't heard it before, is uh, another friendly podcast that's close to us here physically, geographically wise. Uh, but they're also part of the podcast Mafia. Uh, find them on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, any of the places you find our show, you're going to be able to find the Burn It Down cast. And we do uh, as much as we can to help those guys. They uh, have done a few events up in 
Port Orange and Ormond Beach, uh, yep. for Tomoka Port Brewery. Orange. Ormond? And, uh, yeah, we love them. They've been over here. If you've heard Living Pod Curiously, they've sat in on a few of those with us as well. And, uh, just a bunch of fucking great guys. Unless you're going to bash them. And then, then we'll be on, it's your list tonight. So we'll be on board with you with whatever you oh, say. Oh, that's, that would have been a lot better list. Like top 10 reasons <laughs> why Burn It Down blows. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, and how much do they pay you there? Because I'll double that. <laughs> they, they sing him in Dab's K, they pay him in, uh, Dab's K, uh, Ja Rule songs. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Ooh. And hugs. I think about like you. The, the sweatiest and <laughs> hugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, okay. So, for the listeners who are new to us tonight, for the Twisted Ten, especially people who are coming to us from the Burn It Down cast, who maybe can haven't I, heard it before. Can I do it? You're going to take it? Every time I've thrown you I this know, ball, I know. M- and I, I don't practice. And once again, this is unrehearsed. <laughs> here we go. This is your first time listening to Twisted Ten. And what we do here is is somebody comes on board. Uh, tonight we have Mr. Bacon, and he's uh, brought a unique original top ten list. And what we do with that list is we take that list, we put it on a stick, uh, mm-hmm. along with uh, all minor food-based, mm-hmm. along with a graham cracker <laughs> mm-hmm. and some a, a little piece of a candy bar, some chocolate and a marshmallow, mm-hmm. and then we stick it over a fire. All together at once? All together at once. Ooh. And then we uh, let it roast a little bit. I like to catch mine on fire and then blow it out. S'mores would be better with bacon. All right, candied and bacon. That would be so good. So, so then we—I don't know. Uh, and <laughs> then, got away from him already. <laughs> yeah, you guys are distracted. I cannot Is wait till we. Bacon so we discuss the top ten list and we break it down and we. Uh, there you go. And uh, and some stuff. Yes, it's just I basically. It. A you guys top, can't interrupt me. A unique it's top ten. It's not an erection. List. You can't lose it. <laughs> I'm just wondering why the graham Little crackers are know. on your stick. <laughs> you don't put the graham crackers in the fire. No. Yeah. Yeah. Tag. That's where time. you messed up. I, you know how long it's been since I've been like camping? I'm sorry. What are s'mores? This is the whitest mm. thing I've ever heard of. Really? Real you seriously? You take a marshmallow no and you toast it over <laughs> a fire. For, look, let's take oh, a graham yeah, cracker that's right. and then you put the toasted marshmallow on there with a piece of chocolate and another graham cracker. And that marshmallow that's toasted melts that chocolate. So you have a big gooey. So <clears> it's not just a Pop Tart. It's a graham cracker sandwich. It's that is literally the whitest thing I think I've ever heard you say. It's a it camp- is. camping dessert. <laughs> it's Latino's, a camping thing, yeah. which is also one of the whitest what things you that you eat? can do. What do you eat See, when you camp? Uh, Latinos don't have camping. We have poverty. Uh, Domino's, <laughs> Domino's pizza for me. You can't order Domino's when you're you don't, camping. You don't camp or I camp. That's no fun. Camping is, what happens when, camping is what happens when you can't pay the bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, you have like no Wi-Fi. It's fucking nuts. What? Where when you, you go camping, I get into you. this with them on Burn It Down all the, the time. The Holiday Inn not Express has people. Wi-Fi. I'm not outdoorsy at all. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not either. Tech, the Holiday the outdoors Inn Express is where the animals has Wi-Fi. Live. Oh, thank yeah, God. Andrea <clears throat> owns Andrea owns a 38 foot fifth wheel. All right, it needs a little bit of repairs. The oh, inside wow. needs flooring and walls. Other than that, it's good <laughs> mechanically. Just needs floors, just with walls. floors and walls. <laughs> no, 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 no. not exterior. No, but the Hang ceiling's on. okay. Not exterior. I it's would probably have the, to pay someone to get rid of it for me. It's got a good frame. Everything's oh, really? done inside. It just needs to be done well. That's that's <laughs> that's all. It needs to be d- maintained a little bit, and uh, that would be my style of roughing it. Taking an air conditioned oh, generated vehicle out into the woods. No, I used to like do two week backpacking trips up in the mountains in the Carolinas. They just drop you off and Hippie. disappear for weeks at a time. Oh, I was born in Boone. Sure, excuse me. <laughs> I know. I know. I know them. Those fields up there. I, that's that's my stomping ground. A lot of time. white guys carrying tiki torches where you're from. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It's really a mixed ethnicity up there. It's just ridiculously diverse. No, I'm kidding. Yes, that's perfectly <laughs> describing. That's exactly. <laughs> the, the, Can we just comment on how beautiful it is that they had to use Polynesian tools to support white supremacy? <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Uh, all right. So this is the part in the show, <clears throat> Jacob. You've listened to the show before, right? You've heard you've heard Twisted Ten and how we do it. Eh. All right. So yeah, I went back and listened to a couple episodes before I came on. <laughs> we go ten through six. Uh, and then we take a break and then we come back and do five through one. And yep. then we discuss a little bit, whatever at the end of the show. Uh, but this is the point in the show where basically, uh, TAC tosses you a set of proverbial keys, metaphorical uh, keys, metaphorical right keys to drive this car. So, uh, <clears throat> TAC, take it away. You ready? I'm ready. You have to catch it. I'm ready. Ready? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. Heisman. Uh, he, well, he caught it and Heisman did. Ooh. So you didn't catch it. Yeah, I did. No, I he caught, caught it. Heisman, Heisman and then Heisman. booked it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Heisman Trophy. Look, no, no, I it's get a it. sports reference. I get the reference, oh, okay. though. I get it. Like, guys, I, I climbed around Yay, the mountains. Sports. I didn't play team sports. Okay. Right? <laughs> I'm not a sports guy or right. an outdoorsy guy. I haven't told them anything about your list, so Ooh. nothing at all. 
So this no, is we a know complete nothing. surprise. I know that these two are going to love it. And I will chill appreciate it. I know, but I know that these two are going to love so it. I'm a blank slate. I'm your game? canvas. Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> Let me start playing a game then. He already <laughs> said I won't like it. So, Jake, so, no, I never said that. But All right, I, Jacob, this is I yours. decided, because some of your shows are kind of silly willy. Some of them are you know, a lot more like into the research. Like Dan Cummins was a very... Like it was a fun show. I love Dan Cummins. It was also more of a serious tone. Yep. I tried to go like somewhere in the middle. Some of the things I'm going to talk about is just like holy shit. Well, so let's Some let's rank, let's rank that. About. So Dan Cummins is a good example of a very well researched show. Yes. What's an example in your head of a of a just a willy nilly show? Scott sucking dicks for twelve mil. <laughs> <laughs> it was thirteen million. Yep. Yes. Oh, he bingo! Up. Fucking nailed it. Oh, Scott, uh, so you got a wide spectrum. I'm going to try to fall somewhere <laughs> between Wild West and dick sucking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a lot a lot of ground yes. a lot of ground there in the middle. So <laughs> yeah. Wild West. Wild Wide sucking. open. Got it. So a lot of dick sucking in the Wild West, oddly enough. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, quit I that's you. True. I've seen Westworld. That's a close. lot of gumming. I believe would probably be more accurate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth weren't so great back then. Oh. Uh, but so I'm bringing you the top ten list of military fuck ups. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Nice. We have fornicated the canine. We have fornicated the canine. <laughs> Specifically tailored to the U.S. military, and I'm staying away from things because argument can be made that they, like the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, sure, the entire thing was one giant fuck up. But I'm staying away from stuff like that. Staying away from conspiracy theories. Just strictly like documented. It was so bad the U.S. had to be like, yeah, Bravo, I'm fucked Fox up. Bravo, Foxtrot. I <laughs> so, got gotcha. you. Yep. <laughs> should be a good time. So, you All guys right. ready to get started? Yes, yeah. sir. So, number 10. I like no. to call number this Number 10. Yes. Uh, Operation uh, Tootsie Drop. He's not doing it. Tootsie Drop. Doing what? Giving us time to oh, share. Yeah, so, oh, the, the only thing I'm really <laughs> sorry. Each time you say your number. I thought you listened to shows. No, he said he didn't. I don't know. Oh, Our last right. several shows, I we did. didn't really have a whole lot of time I, in between them. I allegedly yeah. partake in things while I'm listening <laughs> to said shows, so I missed bits and pieces here. It's all good. It's all good. Um, oh. Yeah, so I actually had to... I didn't know about this until I started doing research, and I had to really like dig into this one in particular because I thought 100% it was made up. No <laughs> no possible way this really happened. Operation Tootsie Drop, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. That's my own made-up name. There is no real oh, okay. thing right. about this. Hey, do we win something if you actually mention a story that was one of us? Sure. Sweet. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's a good chance here. Jay, Jay just went back through his military history in his head. He's like, no, 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 no. He shouldn't oh, know no. about that. No, I got some fun stories. Okay. Fun <laughs> so this is what happened. Basically, it's December 1950, the Korean War, and okay. our troops are uh, in the Korean Peninsula, obviously, fighting. And they're surrounded by 120,000 Chinese troops in what they call the Chosen Reservoir. Ooh. It's because that's the one we chose. There. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's absolutely just like nut numbing frigid down there. Like during the day, highs of negative five, negative ten. Oh my Lows God. could drop down to negative forty, negative fifty. That's night. like Antarctica like, style weather right there. Insanely cold. And for anybody that was in the military, knows that you use call signs or code names to call in things, so the enemy doesn't know sure. what it is. You're supposed to. We don't really do it because whatever. But. <laughs> Um, so they're in this, uh, chosen reservoir. They don't really have, they're running out of supplies, running out of ammo, and they're trying to figure out what to do because they're literally surrounded. There's like 2,000 of these dudes surrounded by 120,000 Chinese troops. Jesus. So one night the guy's on the radio and he's got to call in more ammo for their 60 uh, millimeter mortar rounds. The code name for the 60 millimeter mortar round is Tootsie Roll. Let me get that Tootsie okay. Roll. So they're stuck. They're trying to figure out that the radio man gets on and says, hey, like, I need some more Tootsie Rolls. We're running out. Somebody help me out. <laughs> Problem with code names is not everybody gets the memo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Some yeah. poor private back in the rear just gets a message that says, hey, these boys need Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> <laughs> so no. they don't hear anything back for the rest of the night. The next, This is why I really had to look this up because I didn't believe it either. The next morning, crates of Tootsie Rolls are being airdropped onto the Allied <laughs> troops <laughs> in Korea. <laughs> and it what? actually ended up being a benefit to them because because it's so cold, you can't really heat anything up, you can't do anything, but the Tootsie Rolls, because they're so small and they're made of chocolate, body heat within 15 to 20 minutes can melt it enough for it to be edible. 
and that sugar and the energy from the candies is actually what sustained them through the huh. long months huh. of trying to uh, first being under siege and then eventually breaking the lines and escaping it's a from blessing the in disguise. Right we there. fucked up on purpose. I just wish that those would have been airdropped with like Wolf or Brimley on top. Like <laughs> we're gonna kill the Chinese with the diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, they said they found. Um, you could easily follow the trail from where the Americans had oh, escaped no. oh, by, follow the by literally following the Tootsie Roll rappers, <laughs> lining the trail out. Of, and I, I didn't believe it. I ended up having to go through um, the National Museum for the Marine Corps, like their archives, and finding what? actual documentation of this happening because it sounds... 100 percent It's like one of those Christmas stories that you see, like yeah. on PBS you know, you or know, something. Yeah. You know who this sounds made up to? People who didn't serve. Because people who served are like, yep, yep they would, they would yep, do some dumb shit like yep. this. Well, let's yeah. uh, actually. 100. Like percent well, We haven't talked about this a whole lot, but I know that Tack and Jay are veterans. Tack was uh, eight years in the Navy. Jay yep. did eight, four, eight years in the Army. Four years in the Army. Four years in the Army. Um, I've never, I've done government contracting. Mm-hmm. I'm not a vet by any stretch of the imagination, but I've been in Iraq for two years and a couple other overseas yeah. places for extended amounts. Uh, and Andrea doesn't have any veteran experience either. Are you, Jacob, are you a veteran? Uh, yeah, I did seven years in the army, uh, in the infantry, two tours in Afghanistan, <clears throat> um, got to travel all over the place. So digging into this list for me, anybody that was in the military probably already has a disenfranchised look on how <laughs> the military is run in our leadership. <laughs> yep. But this list like really just sealed the deal for me. I like it. Some of this is just, just ridiculous. Yeah, but here's what confuses me about this first one is that some guy got this memo or got this was told to bring, you know, the Tootsie, Tootsie rolls. rolls. Yeah. So like and they sent crates on planes, like which means this involved multiple people. Logistically, Did nobody logistically, along yeah, the exactly. chain of command yeah. go question this? Like, not no, the, not like, that I could, sure? because the boots on the ground needed Tootsie Rolls and they're not to be questioned. Yeah, that's kind of the mentality. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, are you sure this is what they wanted? Like, that's what it's And it's to the point know? now that when they do reunions, like Chosen Reservoir reunions <laughs> every year, the, the Tootsie Roll company sends yes! boxes to the reunion yes! oh my God. for all of the veterans <laughs> to enjoy while they're Andrea. swapping stories. <laughs> Tootsie Roll flavor. Hey, remember that box we got? Out of the vanilla Remember ones? Oh, fuck those. <laughs> those are the worst ever. <laughs> there were vanilla Tootsie Rolls? Yeah, the, you've so. never gotten a little Dude. Tootsie Rolls in Halloween. They got the blue is a vanilla, then they have orange flavored, then they have grape flavored, and then they have the, the chocolate ones. See, if you ever trick-or-treated in the poor neighborhoods, that's what you got. <laughs> See, I thought everything that wasn't chocolate Tootsie Roll was called Laffy Daffy. No. If it was different color, you've got a no, different... No, Laffy Daffy It says Tootsie great. Roll on it. Yeah, it says Tootsie yeah, Roll. I've never yeah. had that. I've vanilla. only had chocolate. They got banana flavored. Oh, banana's another... That, banana's what... Banana flavored any candy is gross. Yeah, yeah. vanilla is what? what you give to people you're just indifferent towards. Banana is the one you give to people you just actively do not like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like banana rolls. Laffy Taffy. That shit's good. We're talking Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, no, banana <laughs> Laffy Taffy is actually quite good. Oddly enough. Runts also. Yes. yes. Yeah, I was just yes. Love the runts. All right, Sorry. so moving on, we've got number nine. Number nine. nine. Uh, uh, or niner. <laughs> Are you calling me from a walkie talkie? <laughs> All right, so this one actually has an operational name. It's called Operation Cottage. Oh, okay. You know, okay. very fancy. And this takes place back during the Civil War, or not Civil War. My bad. <laughs> During World War II, a lot of people like to say that, well, the U.S., you know, that no one's ever invaded U.S. soil. Not necessarily true. It's back in 1942, the Japanese came in and actually invaded the islands of Atu and Kiska. It's part of the Aleutian Island chain. It's part of the Alaskan Territory. Hmm. So technically, the Japanese did <clears throat> invade U.S. soil. Well, also Pearl Harbor. Yes, I was going to say that, well, too. Well, like... Uh, of invasion of U.S. soil, not just like an attack on it. Oh, like, like, they, like oh, troops yeah. on the ground. Yeah, they oh, came yeah. in yeah. and invaded with uh, like 8,000 troops. Damn. Um, and came in and invaded both these islands. I'm so Jeez. bad with history. I never so, knew about this. Yeah. And it took us about a year before we were like, you know, we should probably do something about that. <laughs> so in May of 1943, we mounted a big offensive to take back the island of Atu. We went in there with 16,000 troops and just got our asses handed to really? us. Really? Versus 8,000 oh. Jap- Japanese? Uh, we, we eventually <laughs> overcame, but after only after losing a quarter of our troops. We lost 4,000 troops trying to take back this one island. Damn. So Americans not so good against the Asian people. Huh? No. Now, we in our defense, in Vietnam also. We, we did wipe out almost half of the Japanese troops, and the rest, they all, they all pulled out and said, you know, screw that. We're not, <laughs> we're not li- giving up any more lives. But they did end up doing a, like a last ditch effort death charge 
and they ended up killing like most people they only took 28 pow's because everyone that didn't escape decided they were just going to fight until they died damn yeah so we take that one and there's still the sister island kiska it takes us about three months to decide okay well now we're going to take over this one but because of the the large amount of casualties we took at the previous island, we sent in thirty four thousand troops this time. <laughs> oh, that'll make it better. And before we went in there, we just bombed the piss out of this island. Sunk. We were sinking all kinds of Japanese ships. So eventually, on August fifteenth, we ended up landing on the island. The problem is, is the visibility was so poor. A fog rolled in, big storm rolled in. Nobody could see anything. Nobody knew where anybody was, and they ended up just camping out on the beachhead for that night. Now, over that night, they hear rumors of Japanese sniper fire, people taking casualties. Nobody really knows what's going on, though. It takes them three days to secure this island. And by the time it's secured, they only took 313 casualties, about 150 actual deaths. I mean, every death is bad, but that's not that bad, considering. Out of, you know, 34,000 troops, you only had 300 casualties. You know, it doesn't seem that bad. Until you realize that three weeks prior to our invasion of the island in Kiska, the Japanese said, fuck you, and they left. What we invaded left? an unoccupied island. And still lost. And took, <laughs> and took casualties. <laughs> Wait, what? We, we took casualties. We lost 28 people. Friendly fire? From friendly fire, because the weather was oh. so bad, and they landed on separate parts of the island. They ended up shooting each other in the night. The fire, the gunfire they were hearing overnight was themselves. Were, were friendly fire. The so this is, this is a preamble to the Gulf War, because didn't we lose like a lot of... From Friendly fire and Gulf War as well. We've lost a lot more than they'll, they'll ever lost, report. We to lose a lot fire. in Friendly yeah. Fire. Yeah. Even in the, the modern wars that we're fighting, it happens a Heard lot. A, well, not a lot. I thought there was like 20, 30 casualties from the Gulf War that was all from Friendly Fire. One of them, I think, was including uh, getting run over by a tank, I think. That's oh, got to be a course, miserable but, way to go. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, one of the, um, there was a stray mine in one of the bays of the island, and one of the big um, ships that had come over there with it accidentally hit the mine. Killed 71 people. Oh. So all in all, crazy. they lost good. 150 people <clears throat> taking that's... over an abandoned island. It took them three days to do it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, oh. This kind of reminds me of, like, did you guys see Hacksaw Ridge? Yeah. I'm nope. guessing you two saw No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, man. It's on HBO now. You should check it out. Um, oh, that's a plug. kind of reminded me of that a little bit, especially with all the smoke and everything they couldn't see. And Yeah, nobody you know. really knew what was happening. <clears throat> yeah. It's kind of cool. I just I can't imagine being the guy that you know was responsible for all that. You realize three days yeah, later, no that shit. We've now lost all these people for at what point? No does, <clears throat> at what point did someone say, "Hey, what are you shooting at?" Well, they're shooting that way. Well, who are you shooting at? I don't know. Well, keep it up. What I don't understand is how they <laughs> how they ended up escaping without nobody noticing. Like because weeks went well, by between attacking both islands, and up until three days prior to the invasion, like we were doing satellite or not satellite, but spy plane runs. To see if anybody was was still there. Right. Well, if nobody ever, called it off. If you, you you've been to Afghanistan, if you've ever taken part in any AAR, you'll know that Camo is always good, S two is always bad. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> bad S two. We got bad S two, sir. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry, I'm pretty top. sure if I'd been the uh, the highest ranking officer during this, <laughs> the story would not have gotten out at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> And hey, would just hey, report, listen, it's hey, all listen, clear. And we're none of this go. ever happened. This was a training exercise. <laughs> uh, we cleared it. However, that might be the case too, TAC, because that's been 70 years since that's happened. Declassification of uh, documents takes about that long. Yeah, a lot of the things that I was like, I was researching, a lot of it came from things that nobody knew what happened at the time because it was, it was, it was classified until 20, 30 years after the incident. Yep. And then by then, you know, everybody involves either... You know, nobody cared about yeah nobody <laughs> cares anymore yeah that's like that's exactly like that well of course i hope i don't want to steal thunder i'll wait till you're done i've got <laughs> i've got something to compare that to at the end but i don't know if it's something that you're going to talk about it might be i don't know all right so we're going to move on from there to our number eight number eight, number eight. Ah, number ah, eight. Ah. this one is the mars bluff nuke loss or as i like to call it that one time we almost nuked south carolina what? <laughs> <laughs> i think i know this one <laughs> Yeah, so uh, back in 1958, during the Cold War, things were heating up between us and the Soviets. Yep. And we were planning, um, like, testing runs on our Mark VI nuclear bombs. So these planes from Harney, Hunter Army Airfield in Savannah, Georgia, were supposed to take off with these bombs, uh, go over, fly over to England, and test the guidance systems and test everything like that. But the the bombs were still armed, 
They just didn't have their fusion cores in them. They had taken them out and stored them separate, but they had it all together just in case war broke out. They could be quickly averted and go attack an objective if need be. Well, there was one particular Air Force B-47 Stratosphere. I guess we're cutting it a little loose on the plane. <laughs> and not long after takeoff, right over Mars Bluff, South Carolina, the captain reports there's a, a error light coming up on his dashboard. He needs the chief engineer, bombardier guy. He hey, come up here and look at it. We've got a problem. Oh, shit. Let's see where this is going. So and it sounds straight out of a cartoon. The bombardier, as he's reaching up to pull himself upright to walk oh, to the front of the plane, <laughs> pulls the emergency fucking release pin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, we probably should have put that there. <laughs> like, I can't imagine like what went through this guy's mind as soon as he like pulls that. It just looks like he's holding the emergency release. So they put the, they put the emergency and it release. Fall till you realize it. They put the emergency release right next to the oh shit handle. I don't understand why. While researching a lot of these things, there's a lot of mechanical issues that really could have been avoided if someone just wasn't an idiot when they were putting it together. <laughs> mm-hmm. They they shouldn't make it that easy for someone just like reaching up to pull themselves upright right, to right. pull out an emergency release pin on a nuclear bomb. What I love cause, just because I was stationed at Fort Stewart and mm-hmm. Hunter Army Airfield is just attached yeah. to it, so I just I I just can picture him just just some idiot pulling the pin like I ain't about to know what this does. <laughs> <laughs> I was this far. And it's like if you, it makes it worse. Like this guy's the bombardier. His entire job is the bomb yeah. and the bomb <laughs> systems, the payload. Like, this yeah. is his sole purpose to be on the plane. You'd think he'd know where to not put his hand. Exactly. I'm just here to make sure things go yeah. boom. <laughs> so was the so what happened? Was the payload innocuous, basically? Or uh, it had um, its standard uh, high explosive load in it. It's just the fusion core had been pulled out, so it wouldn't go nuclear if it dropped. And the weight of the bomb when it dropped and hit the payload doors popped the doors open. So they're just gliding over Mars Bluff, South Carolina. Nuclear bomb drops. <laughs> oh, my God. It la- ends up landing up in the middle of a farm owned by the Gregg family in South Carolina. It hits, and the thing just blows. There's a there's a crater there now. It still exists. 70 feet wide and 35 feet deep. That's just from kinetic TNT. energy? That's just, not like, yeah. that's just from the that's high, just the the high explosive bomb. load. Just the regular bomb load yeah, that yeah, was yeah. in it that they used to set off the chain reaction. Anything, yeah. Yeah. And God damn. Thankfully, <laughs> uh, the daughters of the family were playing nearby, but only got minor injuries. All in all, there's about six people, members of the family that were around. Only had about, I think, the minor cuts and bruises, stuff like that. Nobody got seriously hurt. I just, I can't, like, how much worse that could that have been? Well, to pay. I don't know the oh, that particular shit. area of South Carolina, but you got to imagine the fallout alone. I mean, that's going to be bad, oh, but yeah. the blast radius is going to be, depending on the size of the bomb, miles and miles. Yeah, it said these bombs carried anywhere from one to five kiloton warheads. Mm. I just wanted to be that South Carolina farmer sitting there looking up at the sky. Looks a lot rain today. <laughs> uh, yeah, down. I reckon you're right. Yeah, it absolutely right. like wrecks all of his farm buildings. <laughs> And everything they end up I'm suing. Sure, you get a nice Force. check, you know. So you'd think that. No, what check? No, we <laughs> disavow it. All knowledge. They d- they what? did get, they did get paid because it's kind of hard to deny dropping a bomb in someone's <laughs> backyard. Oh, it was a weather <laughs> balloon. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should, that's the classic excuse. They should have gone with the weather balloon. So they end up suing the Air Force and they won fifty four thousand dollars. What year? Wait, what um, the, in nineteen fifty eight. Would you think? Oh, oh man, that'll be a lot now. Not a hundred thousand now. It's four. $450,000 today for them accidentally dropping a nuclear bomb in your yard? Yeah. 450 is just not enough for me. No. Yeah. No. Like, I'm, I'm trying to set me up like at a mansion in the Caribbean. Like, you need to hook me up. Well, you, you, know, you, my entire yeah. you know, it's a great country and I am a patriot. I don't want to take all the money away from the, from the, <laughs> boys, just, on the, from the boys on the ground. I just need to get a new tractor now because you blowed up my tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I had a John Deere. I thought you had to shut up, Earl. <laughs> yeah, it was John Deere, top of the line, too. It was international. You shut up. <laughs> he somehow had a whole brand new line he had just bought the week prior. All new, yeah. all new farm equipment. Yes. Didn't your granddaddy give you that international? Shut <laughs> up. I got the receipts. Where are the receipts? It blowed up with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so moving on to number seven. Number seven. seven. Ah, seven. Ah, ah. This one is a little bit older, stems back to the Civil War, and didn't really cause as much loss of life or money, things like that, as the other ones, but it's just 
It's just stupid. And it, it did have a big impact on the Confederate Army. There's no reason for it oh, whatsoever. You gotta, you gotta love this stuff. Right. And it was <laughs> the friendly fire kill of General Stonewall Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Who has a submarine named after him. <laughs> Which was also yep. shot down by another wolf class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I would, if I, I'm just saying, I would never name anything Stonewall Jackson. They, just, they have a track record of friendly fire. That's like, well, shit. What was that one movie? Was it uh, Elysium? No, it was this movie. It was a movie where Tom Cruise was like flying this thing, and on the cockpit he had a bobblehead of the Big Bopper. Tim Who Sully? Uh huh. Sully. I can't remember the Tom name. Cruise? Of the Tom, Tom Cruise. Was, oh, no, Tom Hanks. Oh, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Oh, Tom, sure. it was in like this dystopian future, and he was like scouting the Earth. And he was flying this like futuristic oh, yes. plane, and yes. ha- and he was it, a robot, right? Where he every like yeah, it was like miles a clone or, or a robot or whatever. Yeah, oh, I don't know. and he had a big bopper bobblehead in the cockpit. I'm like, we all know Big Bopper died in a plane crash, right? Like <laughs> yeah. he's oh, like yeah. the and worst. Morgan Freeman's got the dreads. He's exactly. The bad guy. Yes, yeah. like he's the worst bobblehead you want in the cockpit <laughs> of anything. <laughs> That's a good movie, though. It was good. So this is in 1863, in the middle of the Civil War, uh, right after the Battle of, Battle of Chancellorville. And Stonewall had actually gotten a pretty decisive victory in this battle. He had learned that there is a big group of Union soldiers that were just being lazy, just laying around, not really doing anything. They weren't being protected. So he goes in and just obliterates them, which I'm not defending, you know, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just giving you facts about these what aren't, happened. These, aren't what happened. <laughs> these aren't taking sides. This is, yes. It's a dangerous uh, time to bring this up. <laughs> I bet they had tiki torches, too. <laughs> uh but so like he's he's riding pretty high and the thing about stonewall jackson the one i would compare him to today would be like general mattis just the amount of like he's idolized by the troops yeah stonewall jackson was that for his troops at this time he was essentially second in command of the entire confederate army he was a big deal to their campaign. Kind of a big deal. A little bit of a big deal. I'm so kind of a big they deal. They get done with this big battle, and him and uh, his little group of cavalry guys are riding back, uh, trying to get through the picket lines. They get up to their picket lines, and a sentry calls out, you know, who goes there? Before they have a chance to respond, a volley lets go. Oh, no. Shoots everybody. While this is happening, because I mean the accuracy back then, nobody's really dead yet. Like, yeah, you, that's a, yeah. You got a couple in the arm, you know, you might just lose the arm, whatever. Yep. Uh, but in between, <laughs> after the first volley, uh, Jackson's group's yelling out like it's us, it's, it's Stonewall Jackson and his aides like coming back in. The major, the officer that was running that picket line, said, "You know what? It's a Yankee trick. Shoot him again." And they fire a second <laughs> volley into Stonewall Jackson and his group. He ends up getting shot twice in the left arm, once in the right hand. I can understand the first volley. Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even like they just like who goes there? Pow! You're, you're, well, that's a, like, that's you're, a, that's you're a goody it. mob song. Yeah. Who's that peeking in my window? Pow! Nobody now. Look, you're on edge. It's directly <laughs> after a battle. You think it's Union cavalry coming in? You know, scared little guy. He's a farmer. Most of his kids, are, you know, they're not professional soldiers, yeah. especially in the Rebel <laughs> Army. He just, you know, for but. The second one, <laughs> when they clearly call out who they are, just send somebody to check. You know yeah. what I mean? Just like, just to take a sneak peek. They weren't that far away. Like the distances weren't that far. Yeah, it was in the middle of the night, whatever. But for the the guy, when the guy called the second one, that's what really got me. That's what, <laughs> like, that's what truly made this a fuck up for me. It's, well, y'all, if we're gonna fuck this up, we better fuck it up good. Yeah, it was is bad and because it was dark and it was confusion he just like laid there for a while before anybody came to his care anybody came over to check out to see who they were well because if he said anything they'd probably shoot him again (laughs) well i already said my name once that didn't work out well i'm just gonna stay quiet (laughs) shit maybe they don't like me maybe they don't like me as much as i thought they did Yeah, that's gotta be a mind fuck. Was that, like, was that yeah. major just turned down for a promotion? Is that what happened? <laughs> what what it if was. it is him? Shoot him again. Didn't make the list. <laughs> Take oh. him out. <laughs> oh. I, hope that, pro- I really <laughs> hope that the twist on this episode is that all of these people from all of these different like accidents are tied together somehow by a family bloodline or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's all, a, all the Dota. It's the Gomer Pyle bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, because of this, they eventually get to him. They put him on a stretcher. They're taking him back behind the lines. (laughs) They start to get hit with artillery. Of course. Now they're actually getting shot. So what do the stretcher guys do? Fuck this shit, I'm out. They drop him and take off. (laughs) 
<laughs> dump him out of the stretcher. Second in command of the Confederate Army. He already shot his ass three times <laughs> oh, on <come> accident. On! <laughs> <laughs> and now they're like, it's like a, it's like a Three Stooges routine at this point. <laughs> yes, it and is. They, and they drop him on his ass, and he lays there for a while longer, bleeding out just chugging whiskey like a machine which they don't know at the time is actually making things worse because it thins your blood you bleed out faster yep terrible idea if you're bleeding out well that's back when first aid included laudanum and a saw (laughs) (laughs) eventually they end up getting him back to this farmhouse and they're taking care of him they end up having to amputate his left arm you're not saving it the right hand seems okay and after he comes out of his surgery he seems he seems like he's doing pretty good he's got a little soreness in his chest which is to be expected and he just got shot by his own people and then dropped off the stretcher. <laughs> You're going to have a couple you know, cuts and bruises. A couple days go by. He starts getting really sick and then out of nowhere, drops dead. Turns out the soreness, he had contracted pneumonia, oh. which one of the symptoms was soreness in the chest that they just took it as battlefield injuries and completely ignored all the other symptoms. So after he went through <laughs> all of that shit, came through the other side, healthy, he was going to survive, <laughs> missing an arm, whatever, he's alive. They miss the signs of pneumonia and he dies from dies it. I, I love that even like eight days later. I love that even a general got told, drink water, suck it up, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what that was the one time and we saw how it worked out. <laughs> Can you start my, this episode off with the Gomer Pyle theme song? Sure. <laughs> my chest yeah. hurts. Sorry, General, drink water, walk it off. <laughs> Girl, that's so pretty much what happened. So oh. because of a a string of idiotic events. <laughs> they end up losing the second in command of the army. That, that sounds like a mix between Naked Gun and... Oddly um, enough, the private that shot him, his name was Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Documented. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You, I'm gullible as hell, so... <clears throat> wow. <laughs> second cousin to Private Pile. I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to finish my joke. That uh, stole all my thunder, Jay. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, so moving on from that, we've got number six. Face. Number uh, six. Uh, uh. Andrea doesn't say much on this episode. I know. I just said number I'm six. feeling no love. <laughs> <laughs> she just said number six. So on this one, a lot of people may not like me for this one, but number six is Custer's Last Stand. Yep. He's viewed for this as being an American hero, an icon of the Old West and what a man should be. Yeah, no survivors. He's a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) He got his men killed through bad tactics and shitty planning. (laughs) Well, when you're named after a dessert. Yeah. (laughs) For those of you that don't know... (laughs) <laughs> not a very good one, so you should kind of like yeah. pick yeah, you could pick pick throw some that. cinnamon in it, call him flan or something. <laughs> so in, in mid eighteen seventy six, uh, a little bit of backstory on the little bighorn. Basically, we're we're kicking all of the Indians off their lands, Native Americans, whatever you guys want to call them. We're just we're kicking them out. So you know what? We we want this land. Here's some beads and trinkets, and like we've been doing that for all. Even at this point, we just said like just get out. We're not giving you anything in return. We've got you this nice, this nice land over here that's completely aired, and you <laughs> we can't made a reservation on, for you. But it's like, it'll waiting be fun. For you. <laughs> oh, look, we built Mount Rushmore too, so the white people who put you here can watch over you for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you would expect, that that pissed some people off. So sure. there was um, this Indian chief called Sitting Bull, and he ended up getting together four of the biggest. Native American tribes in that area at the time. It's the Little Bighorn Valley. It's in South Montana. And they basically said, we're sick of your shit. We're not moving. So amasses just these giant amount of people, thousands and thousands of warriors that he is, brings and congregates all of them here in the Little Bighorn Valley. They call upon Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer, strong name, <laughs> to come in with the 7th Cavalry and subdue them because, you know, God forbid those Indians are angry that we're kicking them off their land. <laughs> right. We gotta go do something about it. So, where he really ended up going wrong was first off, he just had bad information that he trusted. He shouldn't have trusted, but he had bad information. As too was bad, sir. <laughs> he had uh, Native American scouts doing all of his scouting for him, giving him all his information. <laughs> and for anybody that was deployed overseas in the Middle East knows, same with like the Afghan Iraqi army, it doesn't go well. Yeah. That's, at the end of the day, you're an invading force, and these are their people. So they come back and tell them, they have no more than seven, 800 men down in this valley. Just that, that's it. And most of them, you know, they're old or they're little kids. There's, they're not any real fighters down there. 
She says, "Oh, you know, okay, cool. We're gonna we're gonna go in." So the second mistake he makes is breaking his group into three parts. Shouldn't have done that. His thought process was, well, there's nobody really there to fight. I'll separate them. That way we can kind of keep them contained until the rest of the cavalry arrives. Everything will be okay. So while they're they're separated and they're building up these columns, he's wanting to sneak up on them. At at this point, he still has no idea that they know he's coming. Hmm. Okay. So as they're moving around, they start to realize they're picking up horse trails up on ridges overlooking their positions. They're seeing little signs that they're being followed. They're being watched. They know they're coming. So Custer decides, well, fuck it. You know, I'm just going to send it. And so they bombard him with him and 200 of his 18 men end up bum rushing what ended up being 2,500 Indian warriors. And like these guys are pissed. Yeah. I mean, you're you're coming, you're a foreign invader, essentially. You're not essentially, you are a foreign invader. You're Mm -hmm. coming in, you're taking their land, you're killing them. Because, like, we did it in a nice way whatsoever. I love America, I love my country, but we were some assholes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, I thought thought you said we never had uh, people come into this country. Well, yeah, not not after we took this bitch over. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's why we got to back up Israel, because we did it first. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So he actually, That's gonna get us he realizes it. Yep, and then yep. he, <laughs> That's an email for me. He ends up being completely <laughs> overwhelmed because he thought that the forces weren't going to be, even when he was there and he was scouting, he still thought that, well, they're going to send a bunch of people off over here. What he didn't realize is the Native American custom is you always protect the village. Yeah. So if they even sense an attack's coming on directly onto the village, everybody recedes back. And they hold that spot because that's their their families, their livelihood, everything. So he just goes barreling in and decimated, absolutely decimated. Makes his final heroic last stand on this hill. Honestly, if you look at the area, it's probably the strategically the worst possible spot to mount your last stand. But he ends up doing it anyways. And they thought they were good because they had killed all their horses to act as barriers. Well, all they ended up doing, the Americans just aimed higher with their bows and just lobbed them <laughs> over the horses and just ended up wiping out everybody. Damn. And not too long after all this happens, the rest of the 7th Cavalry arrives and ends up, they, they slaughter everybody. But because of his strategic ineptitude and impatience, he ended up losing half his force Yep, for absolutely no reason. An American hero... I think not. No, the only reason he's known as an American <laughs> hero is because he had that last one. Tell my son I was a hero. <laughs> and so, like, well, well, shit, I have to tell him now. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I mean, the, the Indians didn't have newspapers. So that was, <laughs> that's how that worked out. <laughs> and there's like, there's a whole other show that could be done on like American icons that were really pieces of shit. <laughs> like, that's a good show we, right there, too. We, we blow out a proportion <clears throat> a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Christopher Columbus, don't even get me started on that guy. Vespucci the, the was man number who, one. Yeah, the man who discovered America by never landing on America. <laughs> <laughs> and we still do his fuck ups. For instance, you call them Indians. They were not even fucking Indians. No. It's because of him. Yep. Fucking moron. Anyway, we're not going to get started Ooh, on Tax that. Tax got to that. That might, <laughs> have, to be, that might I, have to be your list. Hold on. We might have to give him shenaniganery tonight. Shit. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. All right. So that's number six, right? That's number six. So now it's time to take a break. All right. And uh, I'm enjoying this so far, man. Good job. Really? Good oh, research. Good, good research. Yeah. I was nervous. I didn't want to make it like too boring. But I mean, no, I, think it's, good. I think it's interesting. No, I, I'm, yeah. I'm learning so much from you tonight. This is awesome. Yeah, I didn't know the names. I knew the names of like Little Bighorn, but I didn't know the history behind it. So yeah, I, it's I'm one not of those history things buff. where a lot of people, like I am a history buff, and I learned so much just from learning. Because it's one of the things like everybody knows about the Little Bighorn, but nobody really knows yep, exactly. about the Little yeah. Bighorn. Yeah. Yeah, it's Custer's it's last ditch effort to not <laughs> <Yeah>. die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, take a break, and we will be back. You're in the mix. In the mix. With DJ Gil Lugo. Hey, Tech, you ever have that conversation with your girl about where to eat dinner and it always turns into that back and forth? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, yeah. Yeah? Well, I've got an answer for you next time that comes up. Oh, yeah? Where at? The Salty Fox in Melbourne off of Old Galley Boulevard. Oh, nice. You know, I've actually been there and the food was pretty awesome. Hell yeah, it was. They offer a great selection of paninis, shareable appetizers, soups and salads, and one of the best desserts I've ever had, the Funky Monkey. Oh, yeah. My favorite was the vintage options. They got this meal called Ramen Noodle on Crack. 
You just got to try it out. Done. That's definitely what I'm getting next time. Put the fun between your legs at the Salty Fox every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with the Old Galley Arts District bike crawl. It's a four-mile bicycle ride down Pineapple Avenue with stops for food and beer all along the route. Be sure to visit the Salty Fox every Sunday for brunch from 11 to 4. Hey, isn't that the $10 bottomless mimosas brunch? Sure is. Enjoy your brunch while the Salty Fox's DJ spins throwbacks and top 40 hits. Salty Fox is located in the downtown O'Galley Art District on O'Galley Boulevard. Check them out on Facebook at facebook.com slash saltyfoxmelbourne or online at thesaltyfox.net. Hey listeners, be sure to mention you heard about the Salty Fox on our show and you'll get 10% off your meals. Village Idiot Pub. You locals know about it? You guys from out of town have to check them out. Village Idiot Pub is now a proud sponsor with Living Pod Carously and the Twisted Ten Podcasts. It's more than just about commercials, though. The cast here will be taking our show on the road to Village Idiot to record some episodes as well as hold events. They have over 30 beers on tap, including ciders and Hefeweizen, my favorite, as well as hundreds of bottle choices. Adam, you forgot my favorite, all the delicious wine. (laughs) So get your friends together and enjoy the board games, puzzles, and the giant Jenga. Let the owner Jason, as well as the rest of the staff there, take excellent care of your beer drinking needs. Mention either one of our shows to the staff and get 10% off your tab. Tuesday is open mic, Wednesday is trivia, Thursday is karaoke, Friday and Saturday night are live music. Visit them at 4 Harrison Street, Suite 103, Cocoa, Florida, or Village Idiot Pub on Facebook. And don't forget, they are a dog-friendly location, so bring your friends, family, and fur babies. It's Adam. If you enjoy the hosts or the content of the Twisted Ten, be sure to check out our other show. It's called Living Podcariously. While the Twisted Ten may get crass and explicit occasionally, it holds no water to Living Podcariously. We do get a little bit more rough and raw on that show. We have a lot of fun producing it and have had some awesome guests. And as always, thanks for listening. And welcome back to the Twisted Ten. Right. Yes. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to Veronica and Sam down at the Salty Fox. We would like to say congratulations on uh, your um, proposal and acceptance of said proposal. We're very happy for you guys. Uh, And we wish we could be there for your engagement party, but we're recording literally tonight when your engagement party is going on. I could have went to the engagement party. Oh, that's why everybody kept asking me if I was going to Salty Fox tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. You didn't even tell me. You knew I would be there instead of here. I didn't even know anything about it. He tricked me. He knew I would be Let me check my phone to see if I missed my invitation. Um, All right. I mean, you certainly can do that. I didn't know anything about it. Hey, guys, this isn't about you. This is about them. Oh, right. Congratulations. I would have congratulations. Been there. <laughs> I, like, I been don't even there. know him, and I'm offended I wasn't invited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Sam and Veronica are the two owners of the Salty Fox. Down Very in nice. Yeah, our our sponsor, and they're uh, they're fabulous people. So congratulations again. We wish we could be there. Uh, sorry, we're not. And I'll do your hair for your wedding, Veronica. Why not, Sam? Well, she doesn't need her hair in an updo. Well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I could blow some glitter on it. I mean, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got a hell of a list. So, Jacob, you brought us the top 10 um, military fuck ups or yeah. disasters or. Blue Falcons? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a a mixture, I guess, of mishaps, disasters, and just general fuck assery. Nice. Uh, top 10 times the military was literally the F troop. <laughs> yeah. Can you do us a favor and recap just the titles of 10 through 6 for us? Absolutely. So at number 10, we have Operation Tootsie Drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, am so, so, I am so inserting the Tootsie Roll song. <laughs> right that right that sounds like something Uncle Luke would be part of. <laughs> Uh, number nine, we've got Operation Cottage. 
Number eight, the Mars Bluff nuke loss. Also, the day that we almost accidentally nuked South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, accidentally in air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> number seven, we had the shooting of Stonewell Jackson by his own troops. Yep. And number six, Little Bighorn, Custer's Last Stand, not an iconic hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that brings us to. Number five. Number Cinco. Five. Ah, ah, ah. I keep ha- whenever you're not here, Jay, I keep trying to fill in your uh uh <laughs> what do you call it? Count Dracula uh, counting. Just the count. The count, the, count. the Sesame Street. And I count. never I never remember where my numbers are in Spanish. Or because yeah, in it's Spanish, the Plaza Sesamo <laughs> count. <laughs> what what? Plaza, Plaza Sesamo. Sesamo. Yeah, it's what we call Sesame Street in Spanish. Plaza Sesamo. Oh, come, place come Sesame. Again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> El it's, Amer- it's here America boy El we speak coche. English and carry tiki torches <laughs> when I was in Spain living in Spain we had El Coche Fantastico and that was Knight Rider <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah some of those translations man, those like translating movie titles have you nothing to do with it Fantastico? El Coche Fantastico oh, my favorite coochie. my favorite was my son's World of Warcraft character name for a long time mm-hmm. it was the I Am Legend in Spanish which is Soy Lienda that was, I, I, that was I Am Legend. Nice. All right. Well, at number five, we have the sinking of the USS Thresher. Oh. So, I don't know anything about this. Go ahead. This is back in 1963, heart of the Cold War. I mean, the Cuban Missile Crisis was not even a year prior to this time. So we're we're on edge. There's a lot of shit going on between us and the Soviets. Nobody really knows what's going on, and everyone's terrified of nuclear war. Uh, at the time, when it came to submarine warfare, the USS Thresher was a United States submarine. The Soviets had us beat by a long shot. They had about 500 subs. We had no more than 100 at the time. And the thing about these Russian subs is they had the ability to carry 24 intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads on them. Mm-hmm. So one sub by itself had enough firepower to wipe any country completely off the face of the earth. Sure. Bad news bears. So... <laughs> The way we countered the sheer number ratio is we started coming out with the most advanced things that we could. So in doing this, we created the new attack subs. Uh, the USS Thresher was the first one out. This was at the time the the meanest, craziest thing in the ocean. It was the deepest, the fastest, the quietest. It could pick people uh, coming up on their radar from just hundreds of miles farther than anybody ever could before. Nice. This thing is absolutely top of the See, line. This is, this is my wheelhouse because I was in submarines when I was in the Navy, so continue on. Sorry, right. I'm enjoying I can this. say submariner. Yeah, it just means submariner, sub, <laughs> submariners were in him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my, my dad was a submariner. Uh, oh, nice. He's the one that actually told me about this originally, and he said the joke they used to always make is... Um, 107, 150 men leave, 75 couples come home. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard them all. I know them all. I know them all. Yeah. Where was yeah. he stationed at? He was on the John Adams, and then he was stationed at Charleston, which is where I ended up being born. Yeah, yeah. He was on a sub down there, um, and then got out like right after I was he born. He was on an old uh, boomer, I guess. Like, yeah, he did. Um, I, he's going to kill me when I get this wrong. But uh, nuclear, You killed him when you joined the Army and not the system. Navy, son. Uh, I, I tried to join the Navy. They wouldn't let me because I had giant gauges at the time so I could uh, get snagged on something uh-huh. on the ship if I got sent to fleet. You did but, what? What did you say? Um, he was a uh, nuclear weapons navigation or guidance something or other. I like a know. missile technician? I think. He did something with like the... The navigation with the nuclear oh, missiles. Oh, uh, probably um, electronics technicians, probably. He was yeah, the more modern like day <laughs> version of the bombardier door guy that pulled <laughs> release on the... Which character on Down Periscope it's, was he? <laughs> uh, I would say he's probably Sonar. Thank you. Thank you for understanding <laughs> he, exactly oh, what I was going I was for. raised on Down Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> Trust nice. me, I know all about that too. So, no, you electronic technician, I think, is more of a what sounds like what he was. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but he was. He was in in the 80s. He dealt with like the um, guidance systems for missiles and stuff like that. Yeah, we created this new class of submarine. The USS Thresher was the first one. I mean, top of its line to the, like mm-hmm. everything was perfect on this. Every weld was done by a master welder. Everything was just top of the line. It was the it was the the greatest, most dangerous thing in the ocean. It was created specifically to seek and destroy these Russian nuclear submarines. That was, that was its whole purpose in life, was to go blow up Soviets, which I think is pretty badass. But so in April of 1963, 
the thresher leaves its dry dock and it goes out to do testing about 200 miles east um, off the coast of Boston. Okay. And so they do their first initial test. They're just doing a trim test, just checking to make sure the wings and everything works, steering, all that stuff works, and they come back and resurface. <sighs> wings. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. I'm sure it's they fine. have official it's names. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> what, what are they called? Fins? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it depends on which ones because you have fair water planes. And then you have, I don't know much about Thresher. I don't know whether they have bow planes, but there's also stern planes as well. So Planes or wings? What? Yeah, I like they're like wings. I, yeah. like, I like wings better. It's okay. <laughs> wings, are, wings are cooler. <laughs> but so they come back up, and the, accompanying them is um, the USS Skylark. It's called a submarine rescue ship. But I mean, it's basically a, a canoe with a, a phone on it. They can like talk to the submarines. <laughs> there's, hey. no, there's not a damn thing they're gonna you, do are, if something uh, goes wrong. With are the you sun. guys sinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's really yes. all they can do. All right, we'll send word. <laughs> <laughs> so they come up, they get back word with them and whatnot. And then they go back down to do their deep dive test. So mm. they go down uh, overnight. They've got communications with them. Uh, sometime during the night, they lose communications with the submarine. Uh oh. Early the next morning, because they can st- they can still hear like what's going on underneath uh, with the sub and whatnot. They can hear what's going on, and they get a garbled transmission saying basically that they're having issues and they're going to attempt to surface. Emergency blow, EMBT blow. Yeah, what it's called now. Is what they're going to try. That's the last thing they hear from. Uh oh. Next, the only <clears throat> sound they hear later is the sub as it's imploding. Oh, no. And what people, like, if you've seen Down Periscope, they talk about, you know, when a sub implodes, it's like crushing like a tin can. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily. What generally happens is if there's a weak spot in the hole somewhere, because those holes are rated to take that kind of pressure. Yeah, they, they, but, they're they're made to, to bend and all that. Yeah, they're made to do that. But if the problem, if you have a weak point in a weld, in a seam in the plates or something, right. the water can come through there with like 80,000 pounds of pressure through a six inch opening. Mm-hmm. So they sounds, up, sounds like my sex night. They, <laughs> oh, and yeah. what happens is in within milliseconds, it w- obliterates everything inside the sub. Within wow, milliseconds, really? 80,000 pounds of PSI of water will come in and just destroy everything take out all the bulkheads and just turn everything into pulp huh but it turns the whole sub into just like a floating blender it's i i watched some of these like recreations while i was doing research and it's some pretty gnarly stuff it's a terrible way to go mm-hmm. so wait wait hold on where, where can i find these <laughs> <laughs> so no i'm you curious in seeing that stuff too but, but go ahead um well it's, it's just it's computer generated models yeah, and stuff yeah. like that but mm-hmm. it, it was intriguing to see and so they go through this big investigation trying to figure out what happened. Uh, so what they ended up finding is there was a pipe in the engine room, about a six inch pipe that burst at some point when they were doing their deep dive test. Um, right around, they were about like 1800 feet. Um, okay, that's classified. <laughs> Just well, saying it well, is. For, for that investigation, it probably it's, is. It's so, it's that so, may be declassified. It's so no, classified, is... he found it on a Google search. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah so. well, what I did find in the research is the exact depth that the thresher is rated to is classified, but they suspect that between 1,300 and like 1,800 feet the N- is when it crushed. Is it the NTSB um, that will also cover that? That type of crash? Because they cover uh, oh. serious automobile, train, and airplane. Would they also cover military uh, underwater vehicles? I mean, with that, I'm not. I'm not. You got to think too. This think was so. back in the early '60s. So NTSB not might, sure. not yeah, might not have even. Yeah, may not even been. A, I don't think there was, they had uh, seat belts in cars back then. <laughs> yeah, that's so. true. So the, seat belt. What are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> so the water comes bailing into the engine room and ends up shorting all of the fuses in the engine room, which in turn, um, it it's called a scram. It's basically when your nuclear uh, reactor overheats and shuts down. Mm-hmm. this is what happened in the thresher. This is what caused them to initially lose power. Uh-oh. The batteries in these subs, they don't have enough juice to just surface off of battery power alone. So as what he was saying, that you do the emergency blow, mm-hmm. and that's what they do is they shoot CO2 into your ballast tanks, forces all the water out, makes you buoyant, and you launch like a damn cork. The f- if you've ever seen the footage of them like blowing the surface, it's it's crazy. Tons of fun to do, by it's, the way. It's insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, my dad said it was like the craziest roller coaster he's ever been on. Times like it's a thousand. Fun. It depends on what part of the boat you're on too. Yeah. You gotta, if you got to be all the way forward on the boat in order to enjoy it, but yeah. So, like I said, they hear the call like we're gonna try blowing it. They hear nothing else. It it didn't fill. And what they found is what happened is the system that they had on this was an old system, not rated to the same depths as the thresher was rated because it was a new sub it could go deeper than everybody else. Mm. So what was happening is when the CO two was shot, there's a little grate in the um, in the hosing or the pipe or whatever that blows CO2 air through, somehow that was freezing over, yep. blocking off the uh, CO2, and so n- none of the ballast tanks were being filled with air. Right. So they're just sinking. Damn. And the reason that this is one of the biggest fuck-ups is because in the investigation, they later learned that only 14% of the welds and the connections on the submarine were actually checked. Really? Uh, so it was, it was a rush job, no QC or very little QC? There was very, very little quality assurance oh. done. There were hundreds, hundreds of welds and seams that were just just never checked. Nobody nobody looked at them. Damn nobody it. did anything because there was, there was no quality assurance program in place. And between 1915 and 1963, we actually lost 16 submarines. Wow, really? In that span, 16. Were these made by government, or were they government contractors back Probably then? Contractors, yeah, I'm sure. Just I'm like sure they it still is today. It's still contractors today. Yeah, you know, yeah. Usually, it's an electric boat up in New England area. Hmm. But the one good thing that came out of all of this, and I'm sure you're familiar with this program, is a program called Subsafe. Mm-hmm. Subsafe was basically created so something like this will never happen again. Subsafe, what they do is they cover all of your um, all your pressure systems, all your flooding systems. They deal strictly with that, and in huh. turn, they monitor all of the quality of materials coming in to build these systems, all the materials used in installing them. They go through everything, and they're very meticulous now about what they will allow on these ships and since subsafe was instituted we've only lost one boat in all that time and i don't remember what the reason it sunk but it had nothing to do with any of this but i guess this has been a recurring issue to the point where like i said they lost 16 ships in a 40 year span yeah that's a lot yeah every and, every uh any person that's any in submarines we know about the thresher we know the story we know and it's ingrained in our brains, and it's just, it's a big deal to us if you're in submarines, you know. And we learned a lot from this. So, I mean, yeah, we lost a lot of lives and a lot of eternal patrol. Shipmates are out there, you know, on the eternal patrol. But we learned so much. Is that so an inside, much. like, Navy, this is one of the Navy things I, I covered. What it is is when a <laughs> ship retires, it's decommissioned. Right. When a ship is lost at sea or something like that, they put it on what's called an internal patrol. Eternal or internal? Eternal. eternal. So eternal. it's in the books Forever. as the Eternal Patrol instead of being like demis- decommissioned at yeah, so yeah. and so. And all, oh, the, cool. all the sailors that perished in the accident, mm-hmm. they're all on Eternal Patrol. So they're at work just, through all eternity. Yes. So there's a lot of things that, like, I post. It's the U.S. military check, fucking like, you one last time. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever look like, uh, ever look like on um, Memorial Day, I'll post a lot of stuff, especially some Marine stuff. I'll post, like, I think I can post something about Thresher one time. About these are shipmates on Eternal Patrol and arrest your oars, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, it means a lot to us submarine yeah. guys. I got to give a shout out to submarine because, like, I'm an, an infantryman. I'm the the grunt. <laughs> we get the attitude of thinking that we're better than everybody else because, honestly, we are. But <laughs> the the one job I would never do, honestly, is being a submarine. It takes a special yeah. breed of person to go mm-hmm. down and do a submarine. Yeah. Like, it scares the shit out of me, legitimately. Just the idea of even going like a couple hundred feet under the surface in a sub literally scares the shit out of me. It, just, it takes a, it takes a, a, a different <clears throat> you kind li- of person. Everyone says we're crazy, but you guys you're are literally DOD. climbing into your own coffin. Potentially, yeah, you, my cousin yeah. my cousin Frank was a mariner too, and as much crap as I give him for being in the Navy, because I mean he deserves it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, no, there's a ton of respect out for those guys because that shit is not. I, I'd rather run. Fa- I'd rather run straight into a firefight than. Uh, yeah, send me back to. Like that, yeah. I'll trade you. Send me back to the Korngal Valley. I'm not going in a submarine. Yeah, kiss yeah. my ass. You know, I'm good on you guys too because I'm not going to do your job. You know? <laughs> this, also, this just became a conversation with the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, in the nineties, yeah. in the nineties too, like the Soviets had the Kursk that went down. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. remember that story. 
that was the Russians, but still, the, we still felt like those are our brothers. Well, you you know? learn a lot from there's that, a, too. There's it's, a weird camaraderie, even, yeah. with, even with countries that we have hostilities with. Yeah, yeah. That was that. like, and even the U.S. Navy was like, we will help them. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, let us down there, but Russia wouldn't let us help. Not, yeah. Not me. Because well, we really, know. I mean, really, the CIA wanted to steal all their secrets, which is why they <laughs> yeah. said no. But no, We'll go down <laughs> yeah. there. We'll get them out. This makes me wonder. So <clears throat> these types of things are what I... If when I'm uh, uh, just daydreaming, mm. I'll think about what's 40, 50, 60 years in the future from now. What are we going to look back on as a society and say, I can't believe we didn't have that program in place, like the QA or the sub safety or whatever the hell that yeah, program sub-safe. was. Yeah, the, what it types makes of, perfect sense now. Of course. What, what types right. of programs are we going to have then where we look back and say we're idiots, you know, for not doing something that's <laughs> yeah. so simple uh, back in nowadays in 2017, 18, 19, you know, whatever. That's a rhetorical. I don't want to really answer. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to compare it to like, you know, kind of like what I do now. There's a lot of, there's things that you learn even like working at huge aerospace companies too, you know, little accidents happen here and there. Mm-hmm. You start a new program and it just and it implements. Maybe. Even maybe. stuff I mean, it's happens like, it's still like, today. Yeah, all it time. happens all the time. Like who thought it wouldn't be a good idea to get the prisoners naked and take pictures with them? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you mean that's not an okay oh. thing to do? <laughs> maybe we're going to look back and say, how could we ever have believed the earth was really round? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Jay's gonna, Let's move on. Jay's gonna punch me on that. All right. <laughs> God damn it! So we've got number four. Cuatro. Number four. Uh, uh, uh. Number four is the Battle of Shiloh, and then the Civil War gave a little bit of love to the Confederate Army earlier. So now we're moving on to some Union dodos, just to bring it full circle. Can, can we, with the whole Confederate one, though, can we kind of just say, you know what, that was Confederate. That wasn't actually United States Army. Does that? Can we kind of skate by on that one? Seven has like an asterisk yeah. on it. You know what I mean? Like, it was an army that operated, I guess. And like, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's my list. <laughs> get him. Don't let him get away with that. What was that? You didn't see anything. I mean, you didn't hear anything. <laughs> so Thanks in again. April of 1862, General Grant has moved his army um, into Tennessee. And with General Grant is the youngest... Major General in the Union Army, a real come upper by the name of General Lou Wallace. Okay. I mean, this guy was an up and comer. He'd done all the right things. He was a rising star in the Union Army. So at the Battle of Shiloh, when they're getting ready to go to, go to battle with the rebels, uh, Grant tells Wallace, Hey, I want you to stay in the rear as reserves. If things get hairy, I'll call you up. And that way they have like an extra group of men to come up and help them. Around 6 a.m. the next day, following the start of the battle, Wallace gets the orders, hey, we need your help, come help. Cool, I got you. He starts marching. Problem is, he's marching in the wrong direction. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) He is going the wrong way. Gets lost for hours. They're wandering for hours. Stumbles upon an enemy position. Lo and behold, he'd accidentally completed a perfect flanking maneuver, and it somehow ended up behind the rebel army. (laughs) Perfect oh, position to attack. I mean, you comp- stumbled onto the anybody that knows battle tactics, flanking yeah. maneuvers is one of the biggest things that you do. It's sure, almost, it's, it's, it's great. It's where you go around the side, come behind. Well, he'd accidentally done this to them. Bravo! He can take credit. Be a you know, people will think that he's a strategic genius. <laughs> you know, rising star will go even higher. No, he decides. Well, this isn't where Grant told me to go. So let's go back. Oh, you why? fucking oh. putz. While he's seeing his guys get slaughtered. <laughs> no, they they just like, yeah, the guys on the other side, he's seeing yeah. them fighting. Then, no, this is the wrong position. Let's go back. <laughs> so about four or five hours later, they end up in the right position finally. The problem is at that point, the battle's moved. <laughs> like these battles don't stay in it. Like they range all through sure. these, these fields and mountain ranges mm-hmm. throughout the um, the country and so they've moved so he decides well we're we're gonna go find him finally shows up 13 hours after he was first given the order Jesus. to move up and help shows up with grant's army needless to say he's he's pissed <laughs> <laughs> so he ends up get like taking away his commission takes away everything and the guy gets stuck just doing a desk job for the rest hmm. of his career. And people have argued, like, well, did he do it on purpose because he was a coward or was he just that stupid? Which I, I'm i not really sure because you think, like, you wouldn't... 
people that believe maybe he's just a coward, but he's leading like an entire regiment. So I don't. I think he was just stupid. I think that. Yeah, you're you're not a coward if you're running up behind the enemy, like. Yeah. Well, it, you are it, if you turn around. But he and go was, back. They're not. They're not shooting at you though. Like, yeah, and honor sure. is everything. No, no. He wouldn't have intentionally been a coward in front of his regiment, right? Because like now today is still the same, but back then like your honor was everything. I, I just so can't. I think believe, he was just an idiot. I just can't believe there wasn't like a number two somewhere who said, "Hey, hey, hey, general, stupid! Like, hey, you they fucking tried. idiot." They tried when they ended up coming up and out uh, flanking the enemy. Hey, good job! All of his advisors, like, hey man, like I know this isn't where we're supposed to be, but this is the most advantageous spot we could Absolutely. possibly have on the battlefield. They don't know we're here. General Grant wants us over there. So while we did end up, the Union ended up winning that battle. They took thirteen thousand casualties. <sighs> God, man! And so now Wallace, who was known as you know the rising up and coming star, the next you know General Grant is now the guy that's blamed for causing thousands of extra deaths yep. because he couldn't get his people to where they needed to be in time. Damn. And then when he was uh, in a good spot, he was <laughs> And, he was and a that's team. why there aren't any army bases named <laughs> after him. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to find anything Wallace base anywhere. He's an idiot. Yep. Good Lord. So well, that's why military intelligence is an oxymoron. It really, it really is. And a lot of things, a lot of the research I've done, like intelligence was one of the biggest factors in basically majority of any military fuck up you can think of. Whether back in the day to modern times, it's bad intel. Yep. And there's really no, yet we still rely on the locals for intel, which baffles me. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> never gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so... I guess we're moving into the top three now. Number three. Number the base. Three. Uh, uh, number three. Uh, uh. This one made it into the top three purely because it's so fucking stupid. I I, I didn't believe it was real. It's, it's, it's like the Tootsie Roll one where I just didn't believe it was real. Unlike the Tootsie Roll one, this one didn't end up good for anybody. I call this one Dunks for Likes. Uh, in September 2010, two Navy Seahawk helicopters were doing flight instruction over Lake Tahoe. The Seahawk is like the okay. Navy's attack helicopter, I guess probably the best way to describe it. I guess. It's oh. it's comparable like the Army Apache. It's just that it shoots the missiles and all that. So the, just like a little two-seater? Fancy armament. Yeah, not it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smaller like attack helicopter. Okay. And they've, the instructors have got flight students out there. They're training them. And this is actually, there's a video of this on YouTube. If you look it up, it's it's ridiculous to even watch it. So what happens is they're flying over, and then all of a sudden they're doing. For certain, the Seahawks aren't made to hover low over anything, especially water. Something about the displacement it messes with the rotors. Mm -hmm. Well, both of these Seahawk helicopters ended up hovering about seventy feet above the water. Both lost control and splashed down into the water. Oh no! Fortunately, oh, yeah. I'm not sure how they pulled it off. Even like watching the video, I have no idea how they made this work. They ended up being able to take to the air again. Like they didn't fully submerge. I guess they hmm. stayed, kept enough essential components out of the water that they ended up really coming out and taking back off. The video only shows one of the birds going in, but both of them ended up doing it. So this big investigation happens, obviously, because there's about a million dollars worth of damage between the two helicopters. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out what the hell were you doing? Like what what could have possibly happened that caused you to do this? One pilot error is easy to understand, but two simultaneous pilot errors is difficult to so comprehend. What, what were they doing? Pockets of gas. Let they were taking guess. selfies for the squadron <laughs> Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. They had students in there and they were trying to show off for the students and get cool shots for their Facebook group. Oh, oh. shit. Lost some, I guess they weren't paying attention. Something happened. They lost control. And these are $33 million pieces of equipment a piece. And they almost dunked both of them into Lake Tahoe. Hey, we should probably take care of this military equipment. Yes, but first the selfie. Yeah. No, here, here in our elaborate studio stack, when we take selfies, we might knock over a sound panel, which is all of about $7 worth of material. Right. So we don't have a big risk You're not here. destroying a $30 million piece yeah. of equipment. No. And no. needless to say, both of the flight instructors they were done they were they, they lost <laughs> oh, their sure. flight status and as a career aviator if you can't fly you no longer have a career yeah mm -hmm. which honestly 
They I, I don't feel that bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> like, they taught ground school after that. <laughs> yeah, like you're, you're idiots. You deserve what you got. And the biggest people I feel for was the students they were teaching. They had already gotten their flight wings, but they were training on that particular helicopter. They had to go through and redo the entire six-month training oh. program. You know what, though? And we're behind on everything because their instructors were fucking morons. You said it wrong. Yeah. It's not that they had to do it. They got to do it. Because those guys were able to pull those helicopters out of that fucking drink. Yeah. They got, you know what? Uh, Count yeah, your fucking true. blessings. I mean, so you got to give a shout out. Like, those <laughs> yeah. are, they must have been good pilots. But guess, still, yeah. if you're making, if that, if bad you are decisions. in that situation in the first place, it's because you've made some pretty <laughs> bad decisions. Yep. Hey, I hold my phone. Watch this. <laughs> isn't, isn't, this how, <laughs> isn't this how Top Gun happened? <laughs> <laughs> Something very similar. <laughs> Send you boys to Top Gun. Nah, but in Top Gun, there was a lot of homoerotic volleyball. It's they the were Navy, they were taking thing. they were taking selfies too. Hey Tech, you never close your <laughs> eyes anymore <laughs> when I kiss <laughs> your lips. You're dangerous, Maverick. <laughs> You're dangerous. Adorable. That's why I'm called Maverick. Uh, who would have thought Sorry. one of those guys would grow up to be Batman? <laughs> <laughs> right, Batman. Yeah, that one made the top three just for sheer like it just it makes no sense to me. Yeah, no. just just for <laughs> sheer idiocy. Dunks for Likes had to be top three. That was a good, that was a good title. <laughs> I like Dunks for Likes. Dunks for likes. Dunks for likes. <laughs> good rap title. Yeah, I like that. So moving right along, we've got number two. two. Number two. two. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So number two is in 1980. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. This is a little bit before my time. But 52 hostages were taken by revolutionaries in Iran. Oh, yeah. It's when Jimmy Carter was president. Uh, it was it was a big deal. This is the story uh, that what's his name did the movie on, isn't it? Not Fargo. Not Fargo. No, not Fargo. You're talking about no, Argo. 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 Yeah, that was Iran. That was a. a Iran. I think I that was. Know. I think that was a different group of hostages. Right, I'll country. hear your story. I want to see. It, it might might be different. Yeah. Um. So Jimmy Carter decides that we're going to go in and have a military action to go rescue these fifty two hostages. Uh, the reason I think it's different, I think the Argo one, there was like six hostages or something. I don't something think there was like that, that many. Yeah. Um, no, I think you're right, yeah. But so he decides to come up with this new plan. And now Delta Force at the time had just been formed. This would be one of their very first missions they'd ever pulled off. For those of you who don't know, Delta Force is like the elite of the elite of special operations uh, in the Army. I think they have some MARSOC guys that come in. Is it like um, the equivalent of the SEALs? Delta it's, Force it's like doesn't the next technically step down from the seals. They, don't, they don't technically, technically exist. exist. Yeah, uh-huh. those are the guys that when they show up at a military checkpoint and the guy at the guy at the gate says, oh, "I need to see your military IDs," they're like, "No, you don't." <laughs> yeah, they Jedi mind trick people. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Damn, it's and it's not so, and it's not so much that they know you don't. They really are Jedi mind trick. They're magical. <laughs> yeah. So they're setting up this <sighs> so big joint operation. The problem is, is nothing like this had ever really happened before. We'd never had to prepare for a scenario like this before so we have all these moving parts people from every branch coming in uh air force marines army navy everybody working together to make this happen all right the problem is because this had never been really done before and people that again people in the military will know that the branches don't always get along very well it's kind of like when the fbi shows up and steps in on the local pd's (laughs) investigation it's it's, out of your jurisdiction sorry it's a very similar (laughs) idea of how that works i'm roscoe and p coltrane n- none of them want to none of them want to communicate so from the very beginning it was overcomplicated. they had no communication they just it was mm. a it was a clusterfuck yeah from just from the get-go so the plan is to send in eight helicopters full of god delta force guys and they're gonna come in they're gonna save everybody so while they're going in a big dust storm kicks up oh while they're flying in Three of the helicopters, gone. One had mechanical issues, one lost a windshield, and the other one just straight up crashed. They weren't 100% sure what really happened with that one. Damn. Uh, but So right from the very, before they even land, almost mm. half of their force, gone. They touch down, they still can't see anything, and President Carter had decided that if any less than six helicopters, because always contingency, you always expect things to go wrong. Sure. So... They said if any less than six made it to the landing site, they were going to abort the mission. Well, there's only five left. So they call the abort. This confirms. Like, okay, cool. Like, we're, we're getting out of here then. In the confusion, one of the transport helicopters ended up running into the back of a fueling plane, blowing up, instantly killing all eight crewmen. I don't mean to laugh at that, but that's, like, that's sad <laughs> to see happen. Yeah, so as they're getting out, 
uh, it, it crashes. And so because everyone's confused, everyone's panicked, they all just pile into whatever they can pile in and leave. The problem is, is nobody was really paying attention. We left the four remaining helicopters on the ground in Iran basically as a wrapped gift on a platter. Oh, Here. my God. What was funny is this that is while, for you. <laughs> while everybody was running under the helicopters, they were all running in, like, super speed, and the Benny Hill theme song was playing. That pretty much, yeah, we left them four top-of-the-line military troop transport helicopters because just nobody was paying attention, I guess, or whoever's job but that wait, was. What, Maybe so wait, what happened to the pilots of those helicopters? Did the pilot run into a helicopter and say, "Get me the I fuck guess out that's of my, here"? Because yeah, like, yeah, like, there's, 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 there's specific crew dedicated to for those each vehicle. Like, like, for did, those they birds. Not, did they like, not land and be like, "Hey, didn't you fly here?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh shit, I flew here. I can understand like, one, but you left four. It's crew like a chief. bunch of drunk people leaving a party. <laughs> well, yeah, there's at least like four or five people attached to every helicopter. <laughs> Usually you've got a flight medic or a crew chief and a flight medic that run the same role. Pilot, co-pilot, Pilot, door absolutely. gunners. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you have there's a good amount of people just huh, skeleton crew on these things that <laughs> somehow just left their birds in That's the middle really of the desert. I can bizarre. just see that, that I can just see that warrant officer standing in front of that disciplinary <laughs> committee hearing like, uh hey chief, at what point <laughs> did you realize that you were not flying a helicopter? <laughs> I've heard of guys losing like, you know, maybe a weapon scope or some night vision. I had a guy lose an AT4. Yeah, how do you lose a helicopter? How do you lose four <laughs> giant <laughs> helicopters? <laughs> it's the dumbest shit in the world. Didn't you fly here in a? Didn't you? Didn't you fly here in your own helicopter? Well, uh, well, no. Johnson's got it. Oh, there's Johnson. Shit. shit sorry, I thought you were flying. He called shotgun, Sarge. But, but that it, happened four to four crews. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my! But God. in the aftermath of this, SEAL Team Six was created <laughs> to do basically because they. Delta Force did does what they do, but they didn't have like a dedicated sea, air, land terrorist. Right, like that was the only thing they did was terrorist counter was say, counter so, terrorism. Still, Team Six blew up that piece of the helicopter that they left. That was very publicized uh, during the um, yeah. That's what you're the, supposed the, to the do. Bin Laden raid. Yeah, you have yeah. An, yeah. That's what you're that, supposed. That's to. what you have an incendiary grenade for. <laughs> What's this no, one they, for? They, oh, this is to blow up what we can't take. They just mm-hmm. they just left them, but because of that they ended up creating Seal Team Six, and now we have one of the best counterterrorism units in the mm. world god damn right <laughs> yeah so that one was bad just because it, it all could have been avoided nobody wanted to work together and they lost lives millions of dollars in equipment just because everyone they were in a giant pissing contest yep yeah. welcome to the military <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that brings us to our last and final Ooh. number one number Oh, no. ah, ah, number one. Ah. Number one is the story of the USS William D. Porter. <laughs> and oh, what a shit show it was. <laughs> William D. Porter. I've never heard of this one before. And yep, there's a reason for it. <laughs> it was <laughs> just like you've never heard of General Wallace before. <laughs> oh, that's true. This is uh, surface Navy, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah so well. this is a Navy destroyer. Okay. Um, built during the World War II, so this is actually in late 1943, um, all right. when all this takes place and beyond. Okay. Porter's first job was to act as an escort for the USS Iowa, which was a battleship that was secretly transporting FDR and the Secretary of State to Egypt to meet with Joseph Stalin and Winston Churchill. Good lord, that's a hell of a round table. Yeah, for, yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. So like, it's kind of a kind of kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's kind of, exactly. <laughs> kind of a big meeting. You don't want to miss <laughs> that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're tasked as one of the escort ships because they got to go through U-boat occupied water, which was most of the Atlantic at this time. Like they were killing us uh, with the U-boats, and their job was to just escort to make sure it didn't get blown up. Blah, blah blah. Well, right out the gate as they're leaving the harbor, somebody decided that they weren't. Every every one of these things on a ship has a job. Every thing that happens on one of these ships, I'm assuming, it, mm-hmm. so, it's somebody's job to handle that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So as they're leaving, they didn't raise their anchor all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> their anchor is only raised, like it's out of the water, but it's like swinging off the side of the deck. That, that, as they're that's leaving. can't be right. I mean, that, that's not what you want. No, no, not at all. <laughs> So they were moored next to their sister ship, another destroyer, and the anchor landed on her deck and scraped and just knocked what? everything, destroyed <laughs> everything off the deck of her sister ship as she's leaving port. 
Now, because they have this super secret, <laughs> fancy escort mission, they don't have time to stop. So the captain's reporter basically just like throws up deuces, says, my bad, and like just keeps on <laughs> carrying on. It's kind of like, kind of like when you get up off the couch and then you start walking, you don't realize that your earbuds are dangling up. You're yeah, like, oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, it's, like, it's like the old lady pulling out of the Walmart parking lot, like, sorry. And she hits every single car in the I parking lot. I think this lot. is officially just called the Navy tea bag, right? That's like the balls of the vessel. <laughs> That's what it should have been it's called. Bad. Yeah, so this is. <laughs> First day out. <laughs> so they end up, they meet up with the Iowa and the other escort ships. And then this is the next day, uh, November 13th, 1943. They're in rough seas, a depth charge, which is a bombless design. You drop it to a certain depth, it explodes. Splashes. and it, Splashes. It, Splashes. It, Splashes. it kills. It takes out submarines. Mm-hmm. Sure. One falls off. Because yeah. that's what you want. It, it, it just, it falls like the fuck on off the deck. The deck. <laughs> Like on the deck or in the water? Falls into the water. Okay. Because it's a rough sea, I guess the jostling motion, whatever, it, it went off. Now they're in the Ooh. middle of U, middle of the U boat occupied ocean. <laughs> Way to set so up a flag every, to say, "Here's where I am." Everyone <laughs> freaks the fuck out. Yeah. Evasive maneuvers. Everyone's losing their minds. They thought they got hit until they they thought that a tor- somebody was shooting a torpedo at their little group. So they all freak out. Hmm. And then at some point, the captain of the porter, I'm like, yeah, that's me. My bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to. So, um, are you talking about these German? They were German U boats? The German U boats are the ones that they're afraid of. They thought right, that right. a German U boat had fired a torpedo yeah, at them, but really, sure the it was page. yeah, it really it was their depth charge. They accidentally. How do you accidentally drop a depth charge off the? <laughs> it's deck it's of a gravity. Boat? It's a gravity <laughs> weapon. Is all it is. Like, are you, did you guys not like, watch you five seven? Somebody's got to tie that shit down. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I know what a ratchet depth, straps or something. I know what a depth charge is for for sure. My yeah, only yeah. problem with that is is the aftermath of after the scramble. Watching mm-hmm. some fucking hillbilly looking dude walking around deck with an inventory chart and going, uh, I think we're missing <laughs> yeah. one. How, how, who is that guy that yeah, found Because they didn't realize it was them at first. Like, the assistant would be like, they had to go through and realize, oh, we're missing something. So <laughs> that was us. I thought we had 12. Well, John, you were supposed to have number 13. No, I started at 14. No, I started at 12. <laughs> Motherfuckers. So that all carries on whatever so the next day comes and because of all this the previous day fdr decides that he wants to test out the iowa and run some real drills in case somebody other than the idiots escorting them decides to <laughs> fire at them <laughs> and fdr so was awesome by the way they send up these out. weather balloons that the the gun decks in the iowa can use they fire at them targets blah blah, blah. some of them because of the wind drifted over by the porter and they oh, just no. kept shooting at them i'm pretty sure it was payback (laughs) so they're shooting these balloons like directly over the uss porter (laughs) and then fdr decides you know what you know it'd be good let's test our maneuverability and what we would do if we got attacked by a torpedo so he comes up with a brilliant idea You, you know who would be who would be good to try this with the uss porter and what should our our fake target be the iowa oh great plan so the way the they have these torpedo tubes, and if you take the primer out of the torpedo, they won't launch. And so that's what they were doing. They were dry firing um, torpedoes at the Iowa and seeing if they could do maneuver drills, stuff like that. They fire the first torpedo, sound goes off, everything's good. Fire the second torpedo, sound goes off, everything's good. Fire the third torpedo, and a very loud whoosh can be heard throughout the vessel. Oops. Oh, Oops. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody didn't pull the primer right. out of the third torpedo. The torpedo tube was just And they uh, launched a live torpedo at the USS Iowa that FDR and the Secretary of State were on. Missed them. The, it ended up, they were able to maneuver out of the way, and it goes off about 300 yards off their stern, and the thing explodes. <laughs> So this is only day three of their mission. They've already destroyed oh. their sister ship, lost a depth charge, and accidentally blew up the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> all in a, a three-day three period. <laughs> That's when you say, all right, let's just turn that, around. And that, and that, again, also accompanied by the Benny Hill theme song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. I see because why you of all this was happening, one. they instantly... Send them, like, you know what? Fuck you guys. We're done. Go to Bermuda. We're going to be an investigation. It's the first time in military history that an entire naval vessel was placed under arrest. <laughs> they arrested everybody the minute they Cap- docked Captain in Bermuda. Was, Captain was fired immediately. 
<laughs> so they most of the officers they actually ended up getting pretty light sentences. The the torpedo man got the hardest sentence. He was sentenced to hard labor, but FDR ended up coming in on his behalf and like it was an accident, blah blah. blah. And when the president you accidentally killed says to give the guy some slack, yeah, you know, people are gonna listen to him. So yeah. he got off pretty easy. And so what they did to the porter to get them the hell out of the way, they sent them to the Aleutians in Alaska. Tying it back up to one of our other topics during the Aleutian campaign when yeah. the Japanese were trying to take over. So they're bored because there's absolutely nothing happening in the Aleutians. And they're moored off one of the islands. And a drunken sailor decides he's going to give the deck guns a whirl. Yep. Are you serious? Yep. What? So he hops on one of the deck guns and is just going to town. Unfortunately, one of the shells landed and exploded in the front yard of the base commander. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Is this boat just cursed or a ship? I, I really, I really, I really think it is. Why is this number one? Because I could have made half this list just with incidents <laughs> from the USS Porter. Oh my god! So after all this done, things are heating up in the Pacific, and they say, you know what? We'll just we'll just send them to the Pacific. I really think somebody was like, they're probably going to die out there. We can hopefully we can be done with them because we're getting our asses kicked in the Pacific at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody just like get rid of them for us. So they are the bad news bearers of the Navy. They end up getting out there and they actually, they served with some distinction in the Pacific warfare. They took down like five enemy planes. They sunk a couple ships. They also riddled one of their allied ships with machine gun fire in the process. We're not going to get into that. Yeah, I, I was going to say they <laughs> shot down all these enemy planes. Uh, there's an asterisk and it says accidentally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what finally did the USS Porter in? <laughs> You know they couldn't have gone out in a normal way. So they're in this battle. There's kamikaze pilots coming in, bombing. And one of the kamikaze planes looks like they're coming towards them. So they open fire. And they end up shooting it down. Like they've gotten pretty good at this point. They shoot it down. The plane hits the water, doesn't break apart, and continues its trajectory under the water. Underneath the USS Porter explodes, takes out the bottom of the destroyer, and she sinks with all hands. Holy shit. Oh, no. Yep. That's terrible. After taking out the kamikaze fighter, it just, like I said, it just didn't, because usually they break apart when they hit the water. Of course, it, yeah. It, it stayed together for the most part and just followed its trajectory under the water. Under Aerodynamic underneath, equals hydrodynamic. Blew out the bottom <laughs> of the USS Porter, and that's all Damn. she wrote. Damn. What a... Sucks. What a... Uh, uh, Bittersweet ending? No, yeah. Just bitter, bitter ending. Yeah. No, there's no sweet to it. It's like, do we have any tragedy loss? <laughs> well, we lost the porter. But do we have any tragedy loss? <laughs> Getting into this, like, with the research was like opening a treasure chest. Because the only thing I knew about the porter was the almost blowing up the eye with the torpedo. The right. more I investigated is when I started finding all of these other incidents, which definitely, yeah. that's the reason it pushed it down to number one. It was higher up on the list, but when you've got six plus oh, yeah. severe oh, yeah. incidents of negligence, mm-hmm. you got to be number one on military force. This is Tor- such a movie in, torpedoes, the, in the waiting to be written, by the way. It'll be a comedy, though. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll I mean, be- torpedoes nowadays are much more sophisticated. Like, you can shut down From torpedoes. Judd Apatow, the USS <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like torpedoes, you can shut down torpedoes. Like once it goes off, like you can shut them down completely because there is a wire that still connects them to the boat, and you can steer torpedoes. You can, you know, I didn't know that. You don't I don't just know that fire it off and it just goes. Like I know a that bullet. we've got wire guided missiles in the army, but I didn't know they had the same technology yeah, yeah. for oh, torpedoes. Yeah, missiles, you can right? shut yeah. them down yeah. and you can uh, you can steer them away. You know? I had no so, clue about that. I didn't know yeah. about that. Can either. you reel them back in? <laughs> Chances are know. you probably don't want to. <laughs> yeah, once it goes and it's like armed yeah you don't want that near your boat actually they're also sophisticated too if they do a, a 180 turn they shut down huh so because they're so guided come back on itself exactly yeah. yeah so it can't blow itself up you know Interesting. that's probably smart i mean we can't make sure all the welds are good but we can make sure that it doesn't do a u-turn on us <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, well, I, what i understand is why didn't they have like training torpedoes in there I don't. I don't know. I don't know from what I the research I did because I thought the same thing. Like they would have dummy torpedoes. That just yeah, it, it makes carry sense some for the same you. reason that the anchor wasn't all the way up. Someone didn't do <laughs> their job. Because it's the USS yeah. Porter. Like yeah. that's really the it's only check. explanation I could find is because this ship's fucking cursed. Do you remember how yeah. Jacob started this list? Doesn't well. everybody have a job for something? So that means somebody <laughs> fucked up at all of these different stages along the way of this vessel's life, basically. Yeah, I don't know how much space they had, so I don't know anything about the ship or anything. So. Yeah, I didn't. I just know it was a destroyer, yeah. which is, I mean, it's a pretty big, it was pretty a wartime big boat, too, but so wartime. 
This is the 40s. You got away with a lot of shit. Like, I, yeah, you, could, you could do multiple shows just on World War II mishaps because we were trying to put out this technology and do all these things so fast that nothing was getting checked on. Well, nothing didn't, was didn't we? Happening. We're the same country that started a war by accident, or not by accident, but just by ineptitude. Yeah, uh, Spanish American War mm-hmm. it started when the USS Maine blew up because we swore that oh, Spain had blown it Maine. up, and it was what the powder kegs inside had blown up, and we ended up starting a war and getting a hold of three countries mm-hmm. that we don't give a damn about anymore. We invaded mm-hmm. Canada over some bullshit. A lot of people don't know that. We got our asses kicked. We'll save that, that for another twist of ten. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know about that too. Uh, that, by the way, Great was list. educational, historical, um, and incredibly entertaining. Yes. I'm a big buff for for especially wartime type shit like that. Yeah, that's my thing. I love it. That was an so awesome. Cool. I'm glad you guys enjoyed uh, it. You took this so seriously. I am so impressed. You really did your homework. You prepped your list well. You had the facts. You had the answers. Great storytelling. Too, yeah, so. fantastic yeah. storyteller. Yes. Thank you. I, pr- I appreciate that. I was nervous coming into it because my persona on Burn It Down doesn't necessarily preclude to a, <laughs> an intelligent, <laughs> well thought out top 10 list. They're now gonna, everybody knows your secret. <laughs> Damn it. They're going to think that we replaced you with somebody that sounds like you. I'm not just a womanizing river rat, um, I promise. This, that, that list that not list was, just. Not, yeah, I didn't <laughs> deny that altogether. That list was so good. That's going to, to Mr. Dan Cummins as a special listen because he loves history kind of shit like that. That's awesome. And he's like, hey, anytime you guys get one of those really cool history uh, podcasts for Twisted 10, mm-hmm. let me know. So I'm going to send him an email on that one. Say, hey, you got to listen to this one. It was really fucking cool. Yeah, I so. appreciate the opportunity because like, I love podcasting. I love what I do on the Burn It Down show. Um, I love all the comedy podcasts. But, like Stuff like this is this is me. This is what I love to do. I'm a history buff. So, like I'm, a, I'm the research king. All my friends laugh at me because I'm full of useless knowledge. <laughs> so like this is a perfect opportunity for me to actually put it to a purpose. Oh, you fucking destroyed that list, man. You awesome. owned it. That was We'll definitely have you back again for another list uh, for two reasons. Number one, you're a good storyteller and you do your research really well. But number two, I mean, let's be honest, it l- saves us from another week of having to do the same research. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've been listening back and everyone goes, yeah, it's been a while since we've done one. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's been like six months since you guys have. <laughs> yeah. One of, I think the last one might have been his. Jay did one and and Tack has done I did one, a recently. Killer one recently. Serial one recently. I listened to the serial killer one. I've listened to the yeah. Mine was a the the last one was the uh, they top lied 10. to you. Yeah, yeah. Movies based on true stories. I think it's been about a year since I've done one. Yeah, because <laughs> I did one in there somewhere, maybe music related again. I don't remember, but yeah, that, that's kind of the thing that we've got going for us now. Make it popular by other people doing it. That's it's working, so we're, we're sticking to it. <laughs> and there is a, a little twist to this one. Oh, oh, nice. oh boy. It's, it's, <laughs> It's vaguely twisty. <laughs> it's hard it's right. with this subject, but one of these dodos ended up writing the greatest, or the best-selling novel of the century. Of the century. Of the century. Stop. <laughs> Movies. Twentieth mul- century, though, not twenty-first. So not after of the, of the twentieth century. Yeah, the okay. top-selling novel of the twentieth century. Like they've created movies recently and in the past based on it. Plays it, Wizard of Oz. L. Ron Hubbard. That is <laughs> I'll start all that. <laughs> Dianetics. But <laughs> uh, the person who actually did it was um, General Lee or Lou Wallace, the guy oh, that General got lost Wallace. and couldn't figure out where the hell he was going. Yeah. After he lost out on his promising career, he became an author. Mm-hmm. And he ended yeah, up sure. writing the very famous novel Ben Hur. Wow, Stop really? it! I swear to God, <laughs> no <laughs> shit. He wrote Ben Hur that went on. The only thing that came out, the thing that like knocked it off the top, was when Gone with the Wind came out. Was the only other thing that at the time period that wow. sold more mm. copies. Damn. And yeah, it became one of the best selling. I mean, everyone knows Ben Hur, the movies. Yeah, the, yeah. How how ironic that a man who went in a full circle. Wrote a book about men in chariots going in full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just history repeating itself. Man. Yeah, when I read that, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe because he's such an idiot. He's so stupid, but he ends up writing. But, the but he can novel write real pretty. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that was an awesome list. We appreciate it. Um, get some plugs out of the way. What do you want to plug? Burn It Down show, number one. Those guys have given me the opportunity to live the degenerate lifestyle that I have. <laughs> and I just I love to podcast. I love to talk. I love to sit around. And they're the first ones that really allowed me to come in, be a part of it. Nice. And I just I love everything those guys do. Uh, we talk a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, they're 
and just our community as a whole, the the Brevard County podcast community. I gotta give a shout out to all y'all. You guys adjust the mic, burn it down. Uh, is it one K away local? Uh, they're in Orlando, Maitland area. Oh, but, well, fuck uh, you guys then. Uh, <laughs> get them. <laughs> Everybody in Brevard is just, and I know there's a big community in Central Florida itself, but the Brevard community just seems to be just very tight knit. Like we were talking about earlier, Absolutely. just Brevard in itself. We support each other, we support local, uh, whether it's our podcasts, our beer, our charities. Yep. So there's just something about the city of Brevard that just makes it easier to do what we do. So I just got to give a shout out to the whole, nice. the whole group. And then the podcast cool. mafia, y'all are all right. Yeah, <laughs> podcast mafia is cool. Brevard, uh, we just started, uh, I'd say we, uh, Scott with Adjust the Mic just started a a group on Facebook for podcast mm-hmm. um, Brevard, Brevard County, County podcast. podcast. Love you, Scotty. Yeah. He calls it Brevard County Podcast Network. It's not really a network. It's just a group of people. Yeah, on the, Facebook. the Facebook group. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, we're, uh, we're we've got some collaborative ideas for all the different Brevard County shows. Jay's got a show called Pops On down in uh, Palm Bay that he does with Raul with his buddy. Nice. Um, our friend uh, uh, Ray Brito has a, a podcast that he does called Gallows Humor. Our boy Ron runs a Dolphins podcast called The Fins Broadcast. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Sakura and Jake. Uh, uh, salt. God damn it, Jake Salter. Jake Salter run uh, uh the Smoke Break talk show. Yeah, Brevard County's got a lot more podcasts than than we think. I know I missed a few of them. If I missed you guys, sorry. Forgot about you. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Jay Flo Dabs K Computer. And, love, uh, I love all of them. Yeah, they're they're good folks. Um, go check if, if for our listeners who haven't heard the Burn It Down show, be sure to go check it out. Uh, it they they have an amazing ability to make it sound. Like they don't give a fuck, but oh, they yeah. really do. You know uh, what I mean? We, we've definitely like. I'm not a full time member on the show. I come in, I guest host. I'm there a lot for them um, when some people can't come in. But it's just we, we've perfected the shit show. Yeah, which it, it, it comes across. <laughs> it's a complete shit show. We have no idea what the fuck we're doing, but somehow we make it work. And honestly, it's that, like jazz. That comes down to Jason and Kenny's or dabs. Like oh, their yeah. drive is out of control i've never seen people <laughs> hustle like these motherfuckers like they, just, they don't let anything get them down it's crazy how they keep it going i would tell you i listened to the living room series that you guys just recorded part with, four yeah melodic yes, descent with melodic descent i listened to that entire thing front to back twice because it was so good. good it was great music there's something weird though maybe it was the mics set up or the arrangement in the living room series but every time a really cool song would come on all i would hear in the background is yeah go from Jason, <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, they, and and people wonder why he couldn't be on the show on Saturday because he was screaming. He was hot. nonsense. He does that during every every time we do one of those living room series yep. shows. He just yells the entire time. J Flow, I love you, buddy. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Made me laugh every time I heard John Mike. Uh, all right, uh, anything else you want to plug? Anything else you want to send uh, our listeners to? Not really. I'm just you know lonely degenerate river pirate. Don't okay. have start, a whole lot going on. Start prepping your second list because you brought a hell of a good one tonight. So I'm excited. I love doing this. Thank you guys so all right. much. Cool deal. Cool. Um, all right, let's get out of here. So check us out on Facebook. Obviously, facebook.com slash the twisted ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen to our interview over on Living Pod Curiously this week. We interviewed Keith with the Children's Hunger Project. And our company, the company that that Tack and all of us own that runs Living Pod Curious and the Twisted Ten are two shows. Uh, might have uh, paid back the community a little bit this week. So go check that out. Listen to the interview. Go check out the Children's Hunger Project as well. Uh, how can they find us elsewhere, Tech? Uh, they can find us on uh, Twitter at the Twisted Ten. You can also follow us on Instagram as well, also the Twisted Ten, and on Facebook. Tuesdays huh? on Podcast Radio Network. That's right. Tuesdays YouTube, on Podcast. YouTube as well. Jay, where are you going to be? Uh, you guys can catch me August 24th, 25th, and 26th hosting again at Gregory's Comedy Club. Gregory. I, am, I have literally been there every other week for the past month and a half. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. So that, that's that been cool. Uh, come see me, hang out with us, come say hey. And then uh, also on September 3rd, you can find me yelling at my laptop while I auto-draft for my NFL Fantasy League. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Should have joined my league this year. I'm already on four. Yeah, I say, yeah, I'm in so many leagues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm on four. Two of them involve money. It's not happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing two this year. Yeah, sports. Two. You're doing two? Yeah. I'm one on, on, one online, on three. Though. I dropped two from last season, so I'm just three now. $60. It's not. No, I don't, I don't gamble real money. Come on, wink, wink. I don't gamble real money. Uh, all right. Never Andrea, where can our listeners come and find you? I'm too tired to even come up with something clever. For where you work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brent Allen Salon is all just a ploy, folks. If anybody actually <laughs> gone for Andrew and Joy. You can find it on the ball earth. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice. <laughs> She's salty. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to get out of here? Yep. yep. So on behalf of Living Pod Curiously, I'm Adam. I'm Tech. I'm Andrea Joy. And I'm Jay Alvarez. And over to our guest for the evening. I'm Bacon. Bacon, <laughs> a.k.a. Jacob, Jacob from the Burden Down. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to us. Check us out again next week. Have a good one. Uh, all right, so this is the part in the show, <clears throat> Jacob. You've listened to the show before, right? You've heard you've heard Twisted Ten and how we do it. Eh. All right, so yeah, I, <laughs> I went back and listened to a couple episodes before I came on. <laughs> we go ten through six, uh, and then we take a break, and then we come back and do five through one, and yeah. then we discuss a little bit, whatever, at the end of the show. Uh, but this is the point in the show where basically uh, Tack tosses you a set of proverbial keys, metaphorical uh, keys, metaphorical right keys to drive this car. So, uh, <clears throat> attack, take it away. You buddy. ready? I'm ready. You have to catch it. I'm ready. Ready? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. Heisman. Uh, he, well, he caught it and Heisman did. Oh. So, you didn't catch it? Yeah, I did. No, he I caught, caught it. Heisman, Heisman and Heisman. booked it. Uh, yeah. okay. Heisman trophy? Look, no, no, I It's get a sports it. reference. I get the reference, oh, okay. though. I get it. Yay, Look, guys, sports? I, I climbed around Yay, the mountains. Sports. I didn't play team sports. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sports guy or an outdoorsy guy. I haven't told them anything about your list. So, nothing at all. So this no, is we a know complete nothing. surprise. I know that these two are going to love it. Andrea I, will chill appreciate it, I know, but I know that these two are going to love so it. I, I'm a blank I slate. I'm your game? canvas. Draw me like one of your French <laughs> girls. <laughs> Let me start playing a game then. He already <laughs> said I won't like it. So, Jake, no, so, I never said that. But, all right, I, Jacob, this is I yours. decided, because some of your shows are kind of silly willy. Some of them are you know, a lot more like into the research. Like Dan Cummins was a very... Like, it was a fun show. I love Dan Cummins. It was also more of a serious tone. Yep. I tried to go like somewhere in the middle. Some of the things I'm going to talk about is just like holy shit. Well, so let's Some let's rank, let's rank that. About. So Dan Cummins is a good example of a very well researched show. Yes. What's an example in your head of a of a just a willy nilly show? Scott sucking dicks for twelve mil. <laughs> <laughs> it was thirteen million. Yep. Yes. Oh, he bingo! Up. <laughs> Fucking nailed it. Oh, Scott, uh, so you buddy, got a wide spectrum. You. I'm going to try to fall somewhere <laughs> between Wild West and dick sucking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a lot a lot of ground yes. a lot of ground there in the middle. So yeah. Wild West. <laughs> Wide sucking. open. Got it. So a lot of dick sucking in the Wild West, oddly enough. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, quit I you. That's true. <laughs> I've seen Westworld. That's pretty well, a lot close. of gumming. I believe would probably be more accurate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Teeth weren't so great back then. Oh. Uh, but so I'm bringing you the top ten list of military fuck ups. Yeah. Oh, yes. Nice. We have fornicated the canine. We have fornicated the canine. <laughs> Specifically, Taylor. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4! You're listening to the Twisted 10, bringing you original and unique post-created top 10 lists, recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle, Adam Poston, Jay Alvarez, and me, Andrea Joy. Oh yeah! Oh, <laughs> what, you've, you're already over it? I'm over it. <laughs> you're already over, I'm over it. I loved it. Oh, thank you. You're biased. It was adorable. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Even Ollie's upset. Listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. Uh, I am Adam. I'm one of your regular hosts. However, this week, we don't have Skype up, nope. but I'm nope. not a, I'm not your host, Tack. Oh, it must be me. Oh, it's not me. No. It's I'm Tack, Tack, and I'm not your host. Tonight, I'm just a participant. Sitting back over on the lady chase with a good hip now. It's not all the way good yet. Oh, almost Mostly good, good though. Right. I can walk, so that's good. Most Hi, Im- I'm Andrea Joy. Most importantly, can you wobble? I No. Okay. <laughs> not anymore. I'm too old. Are you our host tonight? Yes, I'm doing the top 10 reasons I think flat earthers are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And no, our I other- am not your host tonight. Okay. And our other host? Uh, I'm Jay Alvarez. Uh, I don't have a list, so I... Really hope I'm not the host. There's some strange other bearded dude in the studio with us tonight. Oh, that's though. a baby beard. Everyone yeah, has beards. Even you, babe. 
<laughs> Adam, is she starting to call you her beard now? Yeah. That- <laughs> yes. I always had this dream. I wanted to just start like a, a social group of men and uh, we're all bearded and we're just called the beards. And what we would do is go around teaching lesser men how to chop wood and change a tire <laughs> and then a- attend family functions with closeted lesbians. But do we do it while like... Uh, snapping our fingers. No, that's why he's here. We're actually supposed to have the Burn It Down crew tonight. They just sent him in their stead. <laughs> well, well, they, how much they know do they when pay to send you? the looks. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, you're so going to do well here. The Burn It Down podcast, for those who haven't heard it before, is uh, another friendly podcast that's close to us here, physically, geographically wise. Uh, but they're also part of the podcast Mafia. Uh, find them on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, any of the places you find our show, you're going to be able to find the Burn It Down cast. And we do uh, as much as we can to help those guys. They uh, have done a few events up in Port Orange and Ormond Beach uh, yep. for Tomoka Port Brewery. Orange. Ormond? And uh, yeah, we love them. They've been over here. If you've heard Living Pod Curiously, they've sat in on a few of those with us as well. And uh, just a bunch of fucking great guys. Unless you're going to bash them. Then, then we'll be on it's your list tonight. So we'll be on board with you with whatever you oh, say. That's, that would have been a lot better list. Like top 10 reasons <laughs> why Burn It Down blows. <laughs> 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 love you guys. Uh, uh, okay. And how much do they pay you there? Because I'll double that. <laughs> they, they sing him in Dab's K. They pay him in uh, Dab's K uh, Ja Rule songs. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Ooh. And hugs. I was thinking about like you. The, the sweatiest and <laughs> <genius> hugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, okay. So, for the listeners who are new to us tonight, for the Twisted Ten, especially people who are coming to us from the Burn It Down cast, who maybe can haven't I, heard it before. Can I do it? You're going to take it? Every time I've thrown you I this know, ball, I know. You and I, I don't practice. And once again, this is unrehearsed. <laughs> here we go. This is your first time listening to Twisted Ten. And what we do here is is somebody comes on board. Uh, tonight we have Mr. Bacon, and he's uh, brought a unique original top ten list. And what we do with that list is we take that list, we put it on a stick, uh, mm-hmm. along with uh, all minor food-based, mm-hmm. along with a graham cracker <laughs> mm-hmm. and some a, l- a little piece of a candy bar, some chocolate and a marshmallow, mm. and then we stick it over a fire. All together at once? All together at once. Ooh. And then we uh, let it roast a little bit. I like to catch mine on fire and then blow it out. S'mores would be better with bacon. All right. Candied and bacon. That would be so good. So, so then we, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's then, get away from them already. <laughs> yeah, you guys are distracting. I cannot Is wait till we have a, So we discuss the top ten list and we break it down and we. Uh, there you go. And uh, and some stuff. Yes, it's just I basically. It. A you guys top can't interrupt me. We're no, show no, that's the Puerto Rican Fight Club. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's West Side Story. Or Greece. <clears throat> that's why Puerto Rican boxers have a hard time. It's hard to snap your fingers through those gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was your first dad joke of the night. Yep. Hi, I'm dad. These are my jokes. I think every dad joke should also get a bell, but prep for that tack. We should have well, maybe bells. me and Jay will share the bell today. All right. All right. I'll like you. Jay, do you want the bell tonight? <laughs> do you want to use the bell? Oh, don't give me that power. Yes. Okay. Yes, I will take that bell. You know, right. we have we have a guy sitting, right, a random dude sitting all over. You now. guys we keep have. rambling. I was just going to let you go until uh, That's cool. the so silence. Who are held, you, held and us. who is your daddy, and, and what does if, he do? Uh, oh, for the record, I did not let him in this time. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm Baby Beard Johnson. I'm from. The... <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I'm I smell bacon. bacon. Anybody else smell bacon? I love oh. bacon. Bacon smells good. Bacon. Uh, it's bacon. Like the worst connotation is. of my nickname. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to do seven minutes in heaven with bacon. Oh, it's good night for you to be uh-huh. over here. Uh-huh. Good episode for you to be. My on. reputation has preceded me. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I ain't even gonna need the whole seven. <laughs> One of, I'll, I'll finish it in thirty seconds. <laughs> One of Jacob's pickup lines, though, is, "Do you want to come back and eat bacon on my boat?" Yeah. God damn it! Yes, everyone <laughs> I mean, would. Nobody you can say would anything say no. back on my boat, and it's like a ninety percent chance yep. of working out. Yeah, that's time. true. No, but you could say anything about eating bacon, and it's about the same thing. So when they come together, it's just a magical moment. Yes, it's like uh, yes. universe c- colliding. Yeah, try it. <laughs> Can we do an official like announcement? Yeah. So this is? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Joining us from the Burn It Down Studios is Jacob. <laughs> do you want to use your last name too, or do you not want to? I mean, I don't really care. Jacob right. Bacon. Jacob Bennett, uh, <laughs> also known as Bacon from the Burn It Down Studios. He's their right. uh, fourth member, sort of fifth, sort of... Uh, intern slash intern. stuntman slash co-host. One of them's feeling stuntman. lazy. Um, as long as they don't put fifth beetle on the business card, you're going to be fine. <laughs> no. Does that just make you their slave? 
Whoa. Um, essentially, that's why I try to put all the names like before. It says by the time you're done thinking of all the names I've listed off, you forget the fact that I'm just an indentured <laughs> servant for the body. <laughs> a unique it's top not an erection. List. You can't lose it. <laughs> I'm just wondering why the graham Little crackers are on your stick. You don't put the graham crackers in the fire. No. Yeah. So that's where time. you messed up. I, you know how long it's been since I've been like camping? I'm sorry. What are s'mores? This is the whitest mm. thing I've ever heard of. Really? Really? You Seriously? take a marshmallow no and you toast it over <laughs> a fire. From, look, let's take oh, a yeah, cracker that's right. and then you put the toasted marshmallow on there with a piece of chocolate and another graham cracker, and that marshmallow that's toasted melts that chocolate, so you have a big gooey. <clears> so it's not just a pop tart. Chocolate. It's a graham cracker sandwich. It's that is literally the whitest thing I think I've ever heard you say. It's a camp- <laughs> camping dessert. Yes. It's Latino's, a camping thing, yeah. which is also one of the whitest what things you that you eat? can do. What do you eat See, when you camp? Uh, Latinos don't have camping. We have poverty. Uh, Domino's, <laughs> Domino's pizza for me. You can't order Domino's when you're you don't, camping. You don't camp or I camp. That's no fun. Camping is, what happens when, camping is what happens when you can't pay the bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, you have like no Wi-Fi. It's fucking nuts. What? Where when you go camping, I get into this with them on Burn It Down the all the time. The Holiday Inn Express people. has Wi Fi. I'm not outdoorsy at all. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not either. Tech, the Holiday the outdoors Inn Express is where the has Wi Fi. Oh, thank yeah, God. Andrea, <clears throat> owns, Andrea owns a 38 foot fifth wheel. All right. It needs a little bit of repairs. The oh, inside well. needs flooring and walls. Other than that, it's good. <laughs> Mechanically, just floors, just walls. floors and walls. <laughs> no, no, no. Not exterior. No, but the Hang ceiling's on. okay. Not exterior. I it's would probably got have the, to pay someone to get rid of it for me. It's got a good frame. Everything's oh, really? done inside. It just needs to be done well. That's that's <laughs> that's all. It needs to be uh, maintained a little bit. And uh, that would be my style of roughing it. Taking an air conditioned oh, generated vehicle out into the woods. No, I used to like do two week backpacking trips up in the mountains in the Carolinas. They just drop you off and Hippie. disappear for weeks at a time. Oh, I was born in Boone. Sure. <laughs> I know, I know, I know them those fields up there. I, that's that's my stomping ground. A lot of time. white guys carrying tiki torches where you're from. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It's really a mixed ethnicity up there. It's just ridiculously diverse. No, I'm kidding. Yes, that's perfectly <laughs> describing. That's exactly. The, the, Can we just comment on how beautiful it is that they had to use Polynesian tools to support white supremacy? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. 